Wes, thank you very much. A Saturday night in Carolina, Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, the setting for the South's oldest rivalry. This is the 126th edition. North Carolina Tar Heels and the Cavaliers of Virginia to clash again. The Heels are getting more than a bit annoyed with how it's gone lately. Virginia winning the last four meetings. They have typically been outstanding football games, like the Cavaliers winning 44 to 41 last season. But North Carolina is eager to take one and stop the Virginia win streak against them. And ACC preseason player of the year, Sam Howell, the superb Carolina quarterback, about to lead the heels in this matchup with Virginia's outstanding quarterback, Brennan Armstrong and the Hoos. These are two high-octane, high-scoring offenses. They both expect to put up a lot of points tonight. And they're about to have at it again. And this place is electric tonight at Chapel Hill. They are packing them in, a sold-out crowd, and here come the Tar Heels. It's the premier matchup in the ACC this weekend, a long-standing rivalry. Big game in the Coastal Division. And we cannot wait to kick it off tonight here in North Carolina. in the south. A diving in for the score. I want nothing but the real deal. Well, it's who we are. It's what we do the way do. Sam Howell has been excellent. Does such a good job navigating this offense. The life that we're living. Tonight is a battle of strength against strength. You could be in store for some fireworks. We're gonna stay and we welcome you to ACC Primetime Football, presented by Geico, and from Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, number 21, North Carolina, taking on 2-0 oh, Virginia, trying to make it five straight wins over the Tar Heels. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us. I'm Dave O'Brien. My partner, Tim Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback, and also Kelsey Riggs, joining us down on the field. The great part about this one tonight is a lot of great parts to it, but talk about the quarterbacks, the two best right now in the ACC, and Brennan Armstrong and Sam Howell. Yeah, and we knew coming into the season, Sam Howell was going to be one of those guys. I mean, you think North Carolina offensively, you think of big plays, quick strike, because of the strong arm and because of the speed on the perimeter. But for UVA, you know, Brennan Armstrong's this tough, gritty football player, and he's been outstanding passing the football as well. Already seven touchdown passes this season. He, in some ways, has already been better than Sam Howell so far. So for more on the matchup, we go down to the field. Here's Kelsey Riggs. Well, Dave and Tim, you touched on it at the beginning there. North Carolina is very aware of the way things have gone against Virginia in the past. And Matt Brown told me, he tells his players, we just have to focus on us. Sam Howell, though, said if they want to accomplish their goals this season, it starts with winning tonight. On the other hand, Virginia trying to take the next step as a program. That means they have to find ways to win on the road. It's something they've struggled with, and Bronco Mendenhall told us this week we are not afraid whether we're viewed as the favorite or not we think we're the favorite we'll see how they fare in this stadium here tonight Kelsey thank you very much we're going to wait for some of the smoke to clear and then it's really going to get hot between these two offenses here at Keenan 126th edition of the South's oldest rivalry North Carolina won the toss they will defer so Virginia will receive the opening kick as we are moments away from getting underway. Tim, this is one you and I wait for every season. It's always such a good football game. <laughs> it's our third one in a row, Dave. The last two have been phenomenal. I, I expect this one to be the same. Two evenly matched teams. Jonathan Kim to kick off here for North Carolina. Mike Hollins back and awaiting that as we get started here tonight at Chapel Hill. And will come out to the 25. And Armstrong coming out for the first time. Brennan Armstrong. Man, is he hot with the football. He's accumulated 775 yards 
in total offense in two games. Tim, that's the third most in the country. He's been incredible, and it's been in, you know, through the air with his legs, and I think he's probably most dangerous when he takes off as a runner. That being said, Dave, you're right. He's been phenomenal with his decision-making and passing the football. And look for his big target, the gigantic tight end, Jelani Woods, who is six foot seven. He's going to throw right into the flat, and immediately it's Keaton Thompson. Thompson getting free after the first effort to bring him down, and he's going to pick up seven. Taken down by Miles Murphy at a great game last week, Mac Brown said. And I know some people right away, Dave, are saying, wait, 99 out of the backfield. You know, he's a former quarterback, Keaton Thompson, but he lines up everywhere there. Little swing route to start the game off. See how hard he is to tackle. Heck, you're going to see him play some quarterback tonight. Armstrong again getting good pocket protection. He's going to get that one free. It's Thompson again for a big gain. Going to pick up a huge first down. Gets inside the 40-yard line. That's a 28-yard pickup. Eventually, Gimmel took him down, but a huge gain. Watch Armstrong. He actually starts on Thompson. Look at the pass protection he has. It's so good that he's able to actually pump, reset, and then find Thompson. And we said it. Two plays, two touches. Just a really fantastic football player. And finding ways to get him the football. Transfer from Mississippi State. He has been dynamite. Armstrong coming out, winging it, and they're going to keep it on the ground for the carry. Staying on the ground with Rodriguez. He'll pick up seven. And the stop by Cedric Gray. Now, Brendan Armstrong just absolutely shredded Illinois, Tim, last Saturday. 27 for 36, 405 yards, five touchdowns, the third best passing day in school history. And what's been really unique, and we've seen some of it already, is so many different players in different spots. And so... Virginia really tries to confuse you with their personnel groupings. And off to Talapapa straight ahead. Wayne Talapapa, the senior, who is 49 yards shy from 1,000 in his career. That's a one-yard gain. So third down and one for Virginia. And, you know, what's interesting again in these situations, Dave, you know, it could be Keaton Thompson as a ball carrier. It could be Brennan Armstrong. It could be Wayne Talapapa. Again, one of the things that makes them difficult to defend because you have so many different guys that could carry the football. Third and short. We saw Thompson tucking in there. Flag down. They hand off to Talapapa with another flag. Full start. Number 52. Offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. I'll tell you what, the crowd is going to be a factor in this. It sure will be, and, and you know, kind of heading down towards the student section right now. They're getting involved, and they typically feed on that. And that's a big penalty, third and one, a lot of you know, things at your disposal. Much different scenario now. Pushing it back to third and six. And again, he's got Keaton Thompson just off his left shoulder. The snap to Armstrong. He's looking long to the sideline, and it's going to be incomplete. Broken up by the heels and busted up by Jaquarius Conley, who already has one interception this season, the sophomore from Jacksonville. Yeah, and it's pretty good reaction by Conley. You know, Dontavia Wicks probably can fight back through contact. We see Conley with that cast on his wrist. You know, Matt Brown told us probably the toughest football player out there. You know, broken hand. Gets a cast on him, wants to get back in there. Well, right after it's casted up. Here you go at fourth and six. They're going to go for it with an empty backfield. So right away, Virginia is going to test North Carolina. Armstrong will step up and blown dead. And a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout, North Carolina, their first of the half. North Carolina takes a timeout on fourth down and six when we come back. Tim, that's a good timeout by Carolina. They were about to have 12 on the field. Listen, it's a great point, Dave. Yes, you know, they're running their 12th player on the field, and Jay Bateman and his staff called a timeout because that is something that even if Virginia is unsuccessful, can be looked at, and you know, it was really going to give Virginia a first down regardless of what happened. So good use of the timeout. A little bit of confusion for North Carolina. Fourth and six. 
out of the shotgun. And blown dead again. A flag down with 12-10 to go here in the first. Full start. Number 99. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So they like to get real creative with Thompson, but maybe a little too much there. That penalty on number 99. And you see him at the top of the screen. He jumps, and you know North Carolina looks like they maybe were getting ready to you know jump as well. So Virginia to punt it away. Jacob Finn, a senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. With the speedy Josh Downs back there, and that's going to take a bounce and take a backward hop and keep on rolling. With 11.59 to go in the first, that one a short one at 23 yards. And Sam Howell about to get his first crack at it. Against Virginia Tech, he became Carolina's all-time passing touchdown leader with 69. Also struggled, though. He was intercepted three times in that one against Georgia State. The next week, back to normal. In fact, throwing for three and rushing for a couple of scores. And he's been a lot more mobile this season. He's been great running the football. You see what he's done against Virginia in his two opportunities. And honestly, he does so many things well. I think the best thing he does is, you know, attack down the field. He's going to keep it right now across the 20, the 25, out to the 30-yard line for the carry and a first down. So that was pretty much on cue, but you talk about Sam Howell, you talk about his arm, but now his legs. Yeah, and it's basically an escort run. He, you know, faked the run to Ty Chandler, and then he keeps the football, and he's got Walston, the tight end, leading the way, and he's a good athlete, and I think they feel like he's kind of remade his body a little bit where you know, he's worked hard to be more flexible faster, and it's showing. He has thrown for 72 touchdown passes in a very special career. That's out to Antoine Green, and will pick up a first down. They will move the sticks right away. Stopped by Fentrell Cypress, but an 11-yard gain. And you can see how similar those two plays look to start the football game. You know, it's run action, quarterback keep, then it's run action, free access throw to get some of these receivers into a rhythm to build more of a rapport with Sam Howell. Sam now junior. But he tossed 38 touchdown passes as a freshman. And he became a national story with that rookie year. Back to throw. Some pressure. Got the pass away, but incomplete as he took a hit. And good pressure on that one by Nick Jackson. The 6'1", 240-pound junior from Atlanta with 12 tackles last Saturday. Howell you know, got you, popped. You know, you know, we've seen him take a hit running the football, and, and that's a really big shot there. And, you know, it was interesting to see the end of it. Almost like Downs thought he was going to get a pass interference call and kind of stopped running. Second down, 10. He'll fire short. And that one completes to Downs. Downs take it off. Downs going to keep on running for the end zone. He is in for the touchdown. 59 yards. Downs the sophomore off to the races and Carolina on the board. Well, he had 16 catches in the first two games, Tim. No one could stop him then. And Virginia has their hands full tonight. Grayson Atkins on for the point after. North Carolina with a long strike, 59 yards, and they're up 7 to nothing. And we talk about it being a quick strike offense. Sometimes it's throwing the ball way down the field. Here, Sam Howell just needs to throw it about five yards, and then Josh Downs, all kinds of speed in the open field for the score. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And in part by Saxby's, featuring fresh-made chicken tenders, wings, and salads. I think you see why number 11 for Carolina, Josh Downs, has been pegged as the breakout player among Carolina's wide receivers this year. He showed why against Virginia Tech, 123 yards. Had a dazzling catch on a 37-yard screen, and he was off and running 
on 59 yards. The pass play from Sam Howell. A spectacular way to start. You know, when you look at the, the offensive line is blocking. The tight end's going to scrape across. Now, the conflict defender is right here. And really, while well, that happens is Downs is just going to sit down in this little void. And Sam Howell sings that, sees the conflict defender sitting there. And Noah Taylor just isn't fast enough. And then you just see Kraft, 13, the wide receiver, do an awesome job blocking downfield. Because this could have been a long gainer. Instead, it ends up in the end zone. That's good offense by the Tar Heels. It's going to be said he's too fast more than once. And probably tonight, too. Armstrong's going to run. And scampers out of bounds. And will pick up just two yards. Bring up second down for Virginia. So Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, hard at work on the sideline. Carolina put up spectacular offensive numbers last year. They had a 62-point game in Miami, 59 at Wake. And they averaged 42 points a game, second only to Clemson in the ACC flags down. It looked like Ray Vahasic was moving for North Carolina. Offside with contact, number 51, defense, five-yard penalty, second down. Nose tackle in the senior. Now the Tar Heels are at Georgia Tech next Saturday in the ACC Network. And they have a date with Notre Dame on October 30. That's at South Bend. Empty backfield here. Little run around by Thompson again. Rolling Armstrong. Looking down, feel pressure on him. Still up. And he scampers out again. And going to lose a yard on that carry. And really good pressure by Rucker, the outside linebacker. Yeah, it's a nice job by Rucker staying home. You said, you know, I mean, the motion looked weird. It kind of grabs your attention. You want to follow Thompson, you know, on, on the play fake. And I think, you know, this North Carolina defense isn't really sure what they're going to get. And so trying to just, you know, identify, trust your keys, follow the quarterback. Good job there. Third down and short. Crowd really into it. He wants to put it in the air. He's going to throw long. He's got a receiver and an outstanding catch by Wicks. And a giant gain here by the Cavaliers. A 49-yard pickup. Yeah, it's play action. They use a little stack release to get a free runner for Wicks. And he just blows the top off of the coverage. And the ball could not be better thrown by Brennan Armstrong. That's beautiful. Dropping it right down to Wicks. A huge play and a critical third down. Yeah, down to the 19-yard line. Conley had to make the tackle to save a touchdown. North Carolina up 7-0. Here come the Cavaliers right back at it. These two offenses, they flat get after it. First down and 10, a lot of movement up front. Thompson out to the left. Talented wide out as well. Wicks in motion. Armstrong winds up. He finds Wicks again, trying to cut back inside. Got popped. Right around the 11-yard line, he'll gain seven before Gimmel came up to say hello. You know, it just seems like Virginia is changing personnel groups. Look at, you know, North Carolina is wondering, hey, what's the call? What's the personnel group? What should we do? You know, Jeremiah Gimmel, I feel like, you know, the, Virginia's already into a motion before, you know, the Tar Heels have their defense called. Gimmel, their captain and their leader on that side of the football. The handoff and the ball is on the deck. They fumbled it. Did North Carolina get on top? They say they did. Carolina has recovered the fumble. So with all that confusion, a drop, a fumble here by the Cavaliers to kill that drive. Oh, let's go! It seemed like they were reeling a little bit, but Keaton Thompson slips. Watch a little kind of misdirection, almost like a counter action. And he slips with kind of disrupts the timing of the mesh point with Armstrong. He doesn't secure the handoff, and what a stop. You know, you think about these two drives for this North Carolina defense. It looks like Thompson just kind of clamps down on the football too soon. But you think about the stop when, when Virginia was rolling on that opening drive, and to come up with a turnover here, good response. Yeah, big Desmond Evans, 6'6", 265, fell on the football. So North Carolina takes over first down and 10. Howell's last drive went 82 yards and on the carry, way downfield, a big, big gain here by Chandler. 
before Blount finally wraps him up. That's a 17-yard gain for North Carolina. And the Virginia defense just playing with five guys in the box, three D linemen, two linebackers. You have a hat for a hat in the run game. If they play it like that, we're going to see a lot of runs. Chandler again. He's been their best back, the six-footer from Nashville, Tennessee, a grad student, a transfer from Tennessee. You just look at it, you see it's a light box. I mean, all kinds of running room, multiple lanes for Chandler to choose. And the interesting thing about Chandler is he's got enough speed. He's a physical runner. He's just really kind of a good all-around back, good in pass protection, catches the ball well. They're going to review a targeting play here with 7.50 to go in the first. We will take the break as they do that. North Carolina with the football. And there's a look. It was Joey Blump. Joey Blunt from Atlanta. No targeting. We took several looks at it. We thought for a moment maybe even the running back Chandler was the guy they might have been focusing yeah, on. Take a look. Which I think it's the right call. I also think it's right that they look at it. You have two players running full speed, and the helmets do end up touching. Obviously not a defenseless player situation with Chandler as the runner. Joey Blunt clearly not using the crown of his helmet. And so I think it's smart that they look at it, and I think ultimately they, they get the right call. So no play. They drop it back to the 35 first and 10. For a howl in North Carolina, already on top, 7 to nothing. They're going to stay on the ground. And a carry and busting loose. It's once again Chandler. Chandler down the right sideline. Taken down by Blunt finally. Not before he gains 28 yards on that rush. Yeah, and again, it's well blocked. You know, they have numbers in the run game. And Chandler, you can see, he's got the strength and the speed. Not quite the breakaway speed that, you know, the backs a year ago had, but certainly plenty of speed and plenty of power and if the guys block up front we're going to see more of it first and 10 low snap Howell's going to come up and gun looking long looking for the end zone trying to strike a dive into the end zone but he went through the end that's a touchdown touchdown Josh Downs with a spectacular catch 37 yards what a catch it's been a day filled with outstanding catches in college football. This is right there near the top. Did he get that foot down? I mean, I'm not sure that the foot comes down, but the, nope. the elbow and the knee do. Sure did. Which is certainly plenty. It's remarkable that he is able to secure the football because the first thing I think hits is his elbow, and this ball was thrown a long way. Every scoring play is reviewed. So they'll take a look. What a play. And you see that Virginia's secondary waving it off. But this is a great, great catch. Yeah, forget about the foot. It's the elbow. And that ball doesn't seem to move one bit as Downs is squeezing it to his chest. It is a touchdown. North Carolina trying to make it 14 to nothing. Ruling on a previous play of completed catch for a touchdown is under further review. Well, they're going to continue to look. Well, Tim, what do you think? Uh, well, I, if the elbow is hitting there, and now it looked originally like he has possession. Right, right when he catches it, I feel like he's secured it and has possession. Left elbow hits the ground. I don't see the ball move. Right there, it looks like it maybe moves some, but I feel like he's possessing it at that point. It's a heck of a catch. Oh, it's a brilliant I mean, play. You know, Full extension. That is gorgeous. And I would just say this. You know, most receivers, smaller guys, you know, downs 5'10", 180. Most, you know, they, they don't have the strength through the catch that other bigger receivers have. So to make a play like this, when he is screaming down the field full speed, and that ball was thrown, you know, way down the field. After further you. review, the ruling on the field stands. Downs again, and these two have been absolutely electric. Sam Howell has hooked up with a lot of receivers you could say that about, but Downs special. 59 yards and 37 yards for touchdowns.
for Josh Downs, the sophomore out of Sewanee, Georgia. And the extra point is good to make it 14 to nothing. So a tall task already for Armstrong and the Cavaliers. They are 14 down in the first. So here's Downs here. He's going to end up running deep over here. Now the receiver down the bottom of the screen is going to end up holding, you know, a defender here. And so it's got to be an over-the-top throw by Sam Howell. And he's got to see it. And so you see the corner just sit. That ball's got to go over the top. And that is why it's that back pylon, which is the aiming point, which is why it couldn't have been thrown any better. And how about Josh Downs? You said electric, Dave. That is absolutely perfect. Throw it to him for five yards, he takes off for a score, or screams down the field and makes a play like that. You can't throw it any better. You certainly can't catch it better than that. Sensational. So North Carolina rocking and rolling at home in front of a big crowd. And they have 14 up there against Virginia as they try and finally beat the Cavaliers. And that will be through the end zone. It'll come on out to the 25-yard line. So Armstrong will be tested in a major way here. Virginia has not lost to North Carolina in football or men's basketball since February of 2017. It's four wins in football. Seven straight in men's basketball it has not gone unnoticed here at Chapel Hill. It has gotten under their skin. So Armstrong trying to answer. Wants to throw on first and ten. Good time to get it away. And finally he is going to hit Thompson over the middle. And that will move the sticks a 16-yard gain. One thing I will say, down 14-0, that should be a bit of encouragement for Virginia is that they're protecting Brennan Armstrong extremely well. Plenty of time and multiple traditional dropback situation where Armstrong has a great pocket and plenty of time to find somebody open. They go empty again, Mish the tight end in motion. Again, good protection. And again, a completed pass. And he'll get it to the tight end. That's Woods with his first catch. The 6'7 tight end taken down by Gimmel. Bronco says this is the best offensive line he's had at Virginia. He says they know how to protect. They're experienced. They are veterans. They know what they're doing. Yeah, you're looking at, at four seniors and a junior, and you have backups that have 20 starts under their belt, and you can see why he feels that way. Kemp in motion, going to go over the middle instead, and off the fingertips of Thompson. His intended receiver, but incomplete. So it'll be third down and six for the Cavaliers. Really cool play design. They're trying to pump the, the flare screen to the running back, who is really Billy Kemp. He's kind of lined up as a running back, and they have a seam to Keaton Thompson. And Armstrong knew it because he missed him. He had a big play there. The well, crowd has been dynamic, particularly on third down. With about six minutes to go in the first, so far it has been all Tar Heels. Armstrong to throw again. Short this time over the middle to Mish the tight end. And gets a first down. Hard earned. Grant Mish, the 6'4, 250 pounder. Rucker with the tackle, but an eight yard gain. An eight yard gain. And again, here comes a blitz. They're bringing it from here. Look at how this just gets absolutely stoned by this offensive line. And look at the pass protection that Brennan Armstrong has. That's a good job on a, on a third down with a lot of crowd noise of communicating it and picking it up by that group up, group up front. Yeah, they seem to really scuffle with that, the initial drive or so, but settling in now offensively. Armstrong wants to keep on airing it out. And it's going to be knocked out of his hand. It's on the deck again. There's already been one fumble in this one. That one will be recovered by Rucker. And Virginia able to recover. And right as I say, the pass protection is good. Here comes a hit, uh, you know, and a fumble coming off of it. But, you know, Rucker does a good job of kind of getting to the quarterback. I feel like his helmet gets on the ball. And Virginia fortunate to be able to fall on it. Second down, 13. Armstrong going to zip this one to the sideline and caught by Henry. Trying to spin away and stopped by Storm Duck, which remains one of the great names in college football. A seven yard game.
So it'll bring up third down and six again. And you wonder for Virginia, this area of the field, if they get to fourth and really manageable, if this is two down territory, just based on field position alone. Looking short, and a complete pass on the near side of Hollins. Hollins is going to cut back inside. Still trying to move ahead. Stayed on his feet after the initial tackler, Kelly, with the stop, but that's a first down. It's a really good job by Armstrong. Again, it's pretty good pass protection. He starts to his right, and you know Hollins just leaks out, and you see how soft the coverage is, and then good move in the open field by Hollins, and Storm Duck trying to come up and make the play. Yeah, great job to stay in bounds. 19-yard pickup. So once again, the Cavaliers moving the football. Rodriguez in the backfield with Armstrong. Little pitch here to Kemp. Kemp getting free down the right sideline. And he's going to be taken down. He got out to the five-yard line before he was ripped down by Don Chapman in the corner. First and goal coming up for Virginia. That will gain 18. And you can see Brennan Armstrong wanting to get that playoff quickly after the substitutions. And these perimeter runs, going back to the Virginia Tech game, have been hard for North Carolina to defend. And, you know, it's something that we traditionally see in Virginia's offense. And I would expect them to come back to it. First and goal at the five, the ninth play of the drive for the Cavaliers. And a handoff, Thompson. Thompson trying to get close to the goal line, got down around the one. He flipped the ball forward, but he was down. Second and goal to stop by Cedric Gray to deny the touchdown, a four-yard pickup. So second and goal. Virginia trying to get on the board. And they're going to run this with Talapapa as he will get in for the touchdown. Wayne Talapapa with the carry. And Virginia gets six. Talapapa, the senior from Hawaii with the carry. I mean, just look at this. Virginia is going so fast. You have defensive linemen for North Carolina that don't even have their hand on the ground with the ball at the one-yard line. I mean, it, the tempo that Virginia is going with I think it's bothering the guys up front for North Carolina. Justin Dunkel with the extra point. And Virginia comes back 14-7 North Carolina. Bronco Mendenhall, of course, the head coach for Virginia. He talks about what he's done at Virginia in acts and losing that first one to Richmond. He said, oh boy, we've got a lot of work to do in 2016. Eventually getting to the Orange Bowl and a loss to number nine, Florida. Intermission included the COVID season going five and five, but they did manage to defeat the number 15 North Carolina Tar Heels. And now into act two, starting out two and oh, big offense early on. Well, I think intermission for a lot of people is probably how people want to look at last year. <laughs> and so I think that was a pretty good assessment. You know, every time we meet with, with Bronco, he talks about culture preceding success. And he talks about the mindset of his players preceding their culture. And I feel like he believes that what he's wanted to do at Virginia in terms of getting people and players to buy into their process, what they believe in, uh, is definitely starting to show in their program. And I think he felt like he started to see parts of it in year three. But I think you definitely see it with the way his team even rallied last year, Dave, as you said, off of that slow start. Let's Tim, toss it down to Kelsey. Tim, you mentioned year three. You also mentioned the word believe, and that's something that started with a couple of former players here, Joe Reed and Bryce Hall. Bronco Mendenhall says they came to him, said they had an idea, that they believe in what they're doing, and that they would eventually end up winning the Coastal, winning the ACC. He said they wanted to put it in writing. They put it on the back of a T-shirt, and it said believe. You probably, if you're a Virginia fan, have seen those believe shirts. Bronco Mendenhall says culture has been the reason for the success they've had it comes down to effort to will and to their fortitude now trying to make it five consecutive victories over North Carolina how to put it in the air and a quick strike here's Brown Brown is going to take off Brown down to the 20 down to the 10 he's going to walk into the end zone 75 yards now that's a fast answer
Joffrey Brown, 75 yards. Now Carolina lost a lot of talent, including his brother Diami to the NFL. Many believe he's faster. Well, I was going to say, they lost a lot of talent in production, but I don't believe they lost speed because we've seen it from downs. And now Joffrey Brown, my goodness. Grayson Atkins on for the point after. 75 yards in no time at all. Listen, here's the deal. He's on the bottom of the screen, and he's going to run a slant. Now, the reaction to the run action is going to get the safety to come down some. And when that happens, there's a window behind it. And there's the window, and then there is the speed. Anthony Johnson's at corner number three at the bottom, and he can't close enough, and then it's just straight speed to split him down the field. And this is a big deal for the Tar Heels when you think about it. Joffrey Brown hasn't registered a catch yet. They want to get him going. They feel like big plays will happen in waves with him. And that may be the first wave. Yeah, it was one quick wave. It was 11 seconds. The entirety of that drive. And look at Sam Howe coming on, shaking everybody's hand. And I have to be honest, if I was Sam Howell and I was playing, like I would have been like jumping around, hugging guys. I mean, I think that's just how he is right there. I mean, hey, maybe it's he just comes to expect it. Hey, against the Cavaliers, this is what I do. And so I'm just going to go ahead and shake hands and give some, some subtle high fives. But he is on fire. Not just against Virginia, of course. A lot of the quarterback comparisons for him are around Baker Mayfield. What do you think? Well, I think... You know, he does a lot of things that look like Baker Mayfield. And I think one characteristic with both of them is they both have huge arms. You know, for guys that aren't 6'5", they have more than enough arm. And so accuracy, arm strength, you know, better than average mobility, I think it's a good comparison. So 21-7, to North Carolina. How slinging it again. And quick strikes to boot. And the carry. Collins trying to get free, but right into a pile. He will gain just one yard to bring up second down. The South's oldest rivalry, the 126th meeting. North Carolina leads it 63 to 58 with four ties. I think a lot of people are surprised when they hear that, the South's oldest rivalry. We were asking Bronco Mendenhall about it, and he said, well, first and foremost for his program, it starts with the game against Virginia Tech. But this is a huge game. A lot of rivalry elements to this because of players not liking each other a great deal. On the carry, it'll be Keaton Thompson. Actually, it's Rodriguez with the carry, and once again, not much there. A three-yard gain to bring up third down. You know, there's a tendency when, you know, the team you're playing is scoring at will and scoring quickly to try to sustain a drop. Now, if you do that, you know, we've seen two runs on first and second down here. You got to be careful that you don't end up with a quick three and out and get put it right back in Sam Howell's hands with good field position. Third down seven. They are three for four on third down. Armstrong looking downfield. Zips it over the middle and complete. And you're going to pick up 14 yards on the play to Billy Kemp. Taken down by Rucker. That'll move the sticks, though. Yeah, and again, it's good pass protection out of empty. And good job just kind of being comfortable in the pocket by Brennan Armstrong. Kemp really does a good job of working the slot, finds an opening, and nice accurate throw. I've been impressed, Dave, with the passing game so far for Virginia. Kemp, by the way, has now caught one in 18 consecutive games. Armstrong cutting back inside, still on his feet. And a flag is down in the final seconds of the first quarter. 21 to 7, North Carolina. But a flag on the play. Illegal substitution. More than 11 players on the field. Defense. Five yard penalty. Second out. So 12 men on the field. They were not flagged for it previously, but it's the second time it's happened. Yeah, and you look at Jay Bateman. Correction, replay, first down. He's upset about it. There's so much substituting, and you get an opportunity to match if you're the defense, and and obviously Mac wants to talk about them. They're like, hey, if they're going to substitute, got to give us a chance to sub. End of the first quarter. 
And the fireworks That's we anticipated. Two high octane, quick strike offenses, and some outstanding receivers. Not a bad first quarter if you're Josh Downs, that's for sure. 21 to 7, North Carolina. Got to tell you, all through that commercial break, Mac Brown and Jay Bateman, his defensive coordinator, were up in the grill of the officials. Thompson going to run the offense here. They're going to string that out. Good coverage and a loss of two. So basically here you go, you have a player running off the field. So the referee basically has to stop the play to allow the defense to substitute. If the offense subs, the defense has a chance to match it. But for whatever reason, they don't stop it. And Jay Bateman has basically had enough. Because if you play this Virginia offense, they sub like crazy. It's hard to get a sense of their personnel groupings. Armstrong is going to throw up, complete the 40-yard line. Another trick play, but that's going to be incomplete. Intended for Woods, the tight end. He got it to the wide receiver, Dontavian Wicks. Look at this, you get the left tackle out here. It's a double pass because Woods is going to end up coming here after you get a reaction from a defense. It just wasn't a very good throw by Wicks. You see, Woods is going to score if he gets a good football. But it's difficult to catch it, make it look like you're running, and to make a good, accurate throw. They always seem to have the trick plays against Carolina. They try to surprise kick each of the last two years against North Carolina. Third down and six. Armstrong back in running the offense. He's going to step up now and keep the football, trying to get it diving across the 50-yard line. Shy of a first. He'll pick up four. Collins with the stop. And good pressure there by Bohasic, so two yards shy of the line to gain there. And Jacob Finn is going to come on and punt. Again, it's a good pass pro. When Armstrong takes off the run, I would like to see him try to finish the run. You know, I know you don't want your quarterback taking a bunch of big hits, but tough guy like that in that situation, I'd like to see him fight through some contact. Virginia's talked a lot about toughness coming into this game, haven't they? Haven't been bashful about that at all. It's Downs back there to receive, but a very short punt. And it takes a bounce at around the 15. And a 36-yard kick. Sam Howell has been terrific. I mean, he's been amazing, and his receivers have been amazing. Little run pass option, spits the ball out to Josh Downs, and just all kinds of speed. And then how about fielding the bad snap? You referenced it on the call, Dave, and to do that and then make that throw again to Downs, incredible. And then the accuracy to keep his speedy receivers on the move with their speed up. Joffrey Brown with a walk in. One point every eight seconds of possession. I, I don't know what the average is, but I'm pretty sure that's outstanding. Yeah, that's kind of off the charts. He's going to run with it now. And again, a lot of talk about how effectively he's able to do that now into his third season as opposed to his first couple of years stopped by Joey Blunt. Well, and what's interesting is he was a great runner in high school. It was a big part of what he did in terms of his production in high school. And then they get to that opener against South Carolina, and I think Mack was like, wait a second, my quarterback is taking way too many hits. Man down here for Virginia. Falmui is down, and we'll take the break with 13.06 to go in the half. We welcome you back to ACC Network Primetime Football, presented by Geico tonight from Chapel Hill. And baby, 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 the Tar Heels got it rolling with a 21-7 lead. And the football. Ty Chandler in the backfield now with Sam Howell, who has been cutting it loose, second down and one. And going to hand it off. It is Chandler as he will get ahead for first down. And a two-yard pickup for Ty Chandler. Brand new to the program for Coach Mack Brown, who has produced 26 NFL first-round picks. Hall of Fame coach has certainly had his problems with Virginia, but trying to snap that losing skid here tonight. Howe back to throw. Good protection. Winds up. Throwing long. 
Looking for a receiver downfield. There's a flag down. Interference. Shoffrey Brown, the intended receiver. Cypress all over him. Pass interference. Number 23. Defense. 15-yard penalty. And an automatic. First down. Still could have caught it. He really should have caught it. Does a good job of fighting through the contact. Cypress just doesn't look like he's got the speed to run with Joffrey Brown. Ball's underthrown by Sam Howell, which doesn't typically happen. He's got such a big arm. A huge break for Virginia that it was just a pass interference call because he's probably scoring as Cypress goes down. Joffrey Brown's able to hold on to that one. First and 10 after the penalty. It's out to the 40-yard line. Caleb Hood will get the carry. Big back trying to get the edge. The freshman at 5'11", 230 out of Rockingham, North Carolina. He started as a quarterback in high school at Richmond Senior. Passing for 59 touchdowns, but a running back in Carolina. His dad also played in North Carolina. I'll tell you what, he's a good-looking player, too. True freshman, and you mentioned the size, Dave. I mean, kind of, kind of something they don't have right now. I think we're going to see a little bit of him tonight and see how he runs. On play action. How going long again, and connects it once again. It's Josh Downs. They cannot stop him. That's 38 yards. Yeah, and Virginia just can't run with these guys. You see guys just screaming down the field. There's too much speed. And Joey Blunt, who's an excellent player and good tackler, just gets spun around by Josh Downs' speed. And again, Sam Howell accurate on a throw down the field. Carolina knocking on the door again. First down and 10. Howell wants to run with it right up the middle. And taken down at the 15 by Nick Jackson. A three-yard gain. And you see Joey Blunt come flying in there. Quarterback draw look out of that Carolina offense. And, you know, that's what Joey Blunt can do. It's why kind of play five DBs. He's basically a linebacker and, a, you know, a secondary player. But you really don't want him running with these speedy receivers if you're Virginia defensively. Going short, and it's going to be dropped. That's dropped by Kamari Morales in the hands and then out. The tight end could not hang on. Otherwise, he had a decent gain. And I think tight end production is really where North Carolina could start to be a bigger problem. They get guys that, that can kind of block, dig guys out in their zone run scheme, but then also be able you know, to get on the perimeter and make some good yards that way. It had taken some time on this drive. First three took 241 in their entirety. First third down play tonight for North Carolina. Howell on the move. Still on the move. Throws, and it's incomplete to a short into the end zone intended for downs. But he skipped the toss. Good pressure. Mandy Alonzo, the defensive end, but there is a flag on the play. So a penalty flag is down with 10.52 to go in the second. North Carolina, more pressure on top 21 to 7 and looking for more. You know, I didn't think Sam Howell was past the line of scrimmage. If anything, I was thinking maybe he had some guys downfield. Illegal field. forward pass beyond the neutral zone. Number 7, offense. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, plus loss of down. Fourth down. You know, Sam Howell saw downs earlier. I, I think he just didn't want to throw, you know, across his body into the middle of the field. Yeah, and you see that that marker. He's clearly passed it, and, and now makes a little more difficult field goal try. So Atkins on from 36. He's made 18 of 25. The grad student. It is up, and that kick is good. <laughs> He nails it. Carolina with points, 24-7 over Virginia. Geldorf on third and goal, and he's picked off. And this one could be six. Sherman going up top for Crowell. Who's got it? Houdini's in the house. Wow! Rafael Garcia for the ball game, right down the pipe. It's over. Virginia wins. 
A peek inside the South's oldest rivalry, the 126th meeting. Virginia has dominated lately, winning the last four. Bronco Mendenhall against North Carolina. Kind of had their number at four and one. Tonight, however, Heisman candidate Sam Howell leading North Carolina to a 24 to seven advantage. North Carolina to kick off. So Virginia, well, Holland's gonna chase this one down to the end zone. 24 to seven. Armstrong and company needing an answer to Sam Howell. Just has been eating alive Virginia in three career games. Coming into this one, he had eight touchdown passes and almost 800 yards in two games against the Cavaliers. You just look at the production. They scored 24 points and it's just inside 11 minutes left in the first half alone. So, yeah, it's going to need to be a response here by the Virginia offense. Oh, with three touchdown passes already. Armstrong to throw. Some heat on him. He's going to run. Taken off and firing. And going to throw it incomplete. He wanted Keaton Thompson, one of his favorite targets, but incomplete. Brings up second down. You know, Armstrong has actually thrown the ball very, very well. I mean, he's 11 out of 14, 178. Oh, I said I've been impressed with how he looks in the passing game. Comfortable in the pocket. He's been protected well, and he's made good decisions. And he's made a couple of nice throws down the field. So, you know, it's not like he's been flustered. Now Virginia to keep the football on the ground. And once again, it's Hollins with the carry. He'll gain three. Virginia winning last year's meeting 44 to 41. That was on Halloween night. At one point, they scored 28 consecutive points. They don't need all that right now, but they've got to get the offense rolling. They've been good so far on third down conversions. Ten minutes to go before halftime. Clock down to one, got the playoff. He's going to fire this one and complete. Got it to a wide receiver, kept trying to get free. And made a big gain out of that one. Initially, looked like they had him down for a much shorter game, but that goes for 32. This is a really good job. They're bringing pressure off of here, and they blitz the protection. They don't have enough to pick it up. And Brennan Armstrong does an excellent job of just standing in there in the face of pressure, getting the ball off to Billy Kemp, and then good run after the catch. That's a big-time play by the quarterback. First and 10 at the 40 of Carolina. Hollins and Tala pop of the backfield. Armstrong wants to air it out again. Going to throw that one long. He has a receiver in the end zone. A spectacular diving catch. And that's Wicks in the end zone for six. A 40-yard strike. And the Cavaliers come right back. I mean, he gets interfered with. He's getting tackled before the ball gets there. His arm is underneath that football. That's a catch. And Dave, you called it. You said, hey, Ben Armstrong's playing pretty well, 11 to 14. And you think about that drive. Outstanding play into the face of pressure. And then a gorgeous throw to Wicks for the score. Oh. Beating Kyler McMichael in the end zone. And on for the extra point, Dunkel. And he's got it. Virginia with a big strike. Well, it's been the Carolina offense that's had the big strikes, but a little double move by Wicks, and then a perfect throw for Brennan Armstrong. The Cavaliers fight back. Twenty-four to fourteen as the Cavaliers come fighting back with a spectacular catch in the end zone. Both teams can say that already in the first half. <laughs> it's been, I mean, amazing. Just Sports Center highlights for days so far in this one. In the case around college football today, it's been a very busy day in the ACC. Last night, Louisville with an incredible victory over 
UCF, but back to the touchdown moments ago. It's a version of sluggo seam. So slant and go, and then seam. And so basically the way the quarterback's going to read this out is if you have the sluggo, you're going to take it. The double move, you get, you win. That's the shot you take. It's a perfect throw. It was a great route by Wicks, and he gets interfered with. Really felt like there should have been a flag as McMichael is grabbing onto him beforehand. And Brendan Armstrong, a little more animated when he makes great throws than, than Sam Howell is. Now these have been the two best quarterbacks in the conference in the early going. They're showing it tonight. That's Hood <sighs> trying to go off the right side and stopped as we go down to Kelsey. Well, you guys have been talking about Brennan Armstrong, and I've kept my eye on him throughout this first half because leading up to this game, everybody talked about the confidence that his teammates have in him and that he has in himself. Early on, he was looking at them, telling them, stay locked in, we're good, pointing to his head, saying, keep your mental game up tight. When he missed Wicks a few drives ago, he looked at him, he said, hey, I got you next time, and that ended up being actually the case there. These guys said, after that touchdown, look, we're right back in it, let's go. We've got plenty of time. Tim, is it that easy? I got you next time. Yeah, if you get him the next time, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Howell to run, looking for that flag. He's going to step out very close to the line to gain. And he will pick up a first down. And you can see a little a helmet came rolling off. His, I think it was Keyron Johnson. And, like, you know, Brian Anderson, the starting center, he's out. And, not sure what happens there, but his helmet gets ripped off. And, and now Anderson, who's kind of been dealing with some injuries, he's got to come in with the helmet coming off of Keyron Johnson. Yeah, missed game one because of injuries. The captain of that old line. First down and 10. Short toss going to the tight end to get Walston. And he's going to gain four yards. Now, before the game, even though it didn't look like he was going to be able to start, Anderson looked just fine jumping into the crowd and looking pretty spry. I mean, I feel like if you're that size and can do like a Lambo leap, <laughs> yeah. uh, you should be good enough to go then. Looked pretty fresh before the game anyway. Second down, six. Hand off for Hood. Room to rumble. Cuts back inside. Finally taken down. He's going to pick up 26 yards before Nick Jackson got to him. Yeah, and you see here, this is going to do a good job of blocking here. And then here comes Hood. Watch the patience, though, as this develops. Kind of a split zone. Get to the second level. Set it up. A little bit of a cutback. For a guy that was playing quarterback a year ago, you can see the natural instincts as a runner. And a good job of those guys up front. You see the tight end scrape across the formation. That's their split zone that they call so often. Johnson back in at center. Out of the shotgun. And this time they find Hood very quickly, but it's going to be instead the run by Howell. Nick Jackson will snuff that one down. A five-yard pickup. Talk yeah, about I, the agility here. Yeah, and I think Howell just, you know, kind of reads it late, keeps the football, and, you know, they made a lot about him and his kind of the, the work he put in to kind of reshape his body and he looks like he's he's running differently empty in the backfield second down five wants to throw looking for that end zone it's going to be overthrown and incomplete his intended receiver was Antoine Green the That's senior covered by Anthony Johnson who does have a pick and had a big day against Illinois and once again Johnson losing that helmet flag down Personal foul, face mask, number 94 defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Number 69 does not have to leave the game for one play because his helmet came off as a direct result of the foul. Foul Mui again, the nose tackle, the junior from Hawaii. Check it out. Yeah, look, okay, so it looked like a, almost an initial punch to, you know, a hand to the face, and then, you know, clearly you can't do that. And even after the helmet comes off, you know, a shot from Fal Mui to Keyron Johnson's face. First and ten. Carolina trying to knock it in again with six and a half to go before halftime. He'll throw to the flat. Spinning around. It's Downs again. Downs so tough to take down on first contact. He'll pick up a first down. A 13-yard gain. 
you know, he's one of these players. He, you know, he's small, but he obviously is strong because he kind of gets through contact. And, man, it's just so dangerous with the ball in his hands. First and goal for Carolina. Downs has had a spectacular first half. Sam Howell has as well. Howell thrown for the end zone. And it's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Virginia. It's Cyprus running down the right sideline. Cyprus will cut back in before he's finally taken down. And it was Justin Olsen, a wide receiver, to save a touchdown. 66 yards on the return. A flag is down. As Howell is picked up, but a flag down on the play. After the play was over, sports like conduct, intercepting team, number 23, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, first out. That was on Fentrell Cypress, the man who made the interception. Unsportsmanlike well, conduct. It, it's a bad decision by Sam Howell. Here's what they're doing. They're, they're running to the corner and then the flat. And Sam doesn't like the flat, and he just doesn't get his body situated enough to get the ball out to Justin Olsen, who's running the corner. You see him, he kind of is a little bit awkward there under some pressure, and you've got to miss outside. He was late, and he missed inside. And then that's a huge play by the Virginia defense. You see Cypress. You know, so excited, he slams the ball down, which drew the flag. So Armstrong from midfield, and a completed pass here to his wide receiver, Wicks, who's already made a spectacular catch in the end zone. Stopped by Storm Duck, but it gains 19 yards, and the Cavaliers moving the football right away. First down and 10. Wicks, four receptions, 115 yards. And a great touchdown. Pressure on Armstrong. He's going to go down at the 40. No place to hide there for Brennan Armstrong. He's going to lose 10 yards there. Sacked by Fox. And, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of empty for Virginia offensively. And I think that what I would guess is that Jay Bateman decides, like, if they're going to go empty and try to throw the football out of empty, then we're going to try to get as many single blocks on that offensive line as we can because they do think that both Tamon Fox and Tamari Fox can win. He's going to throw it once again, a battle for it, and once again it's Wicks. And a fight for that around the 10-yard line. They're still battling a 30-yard catch. Storm Duck still fighting for it. But Virginia with the reception on a tough, tough catch. It's a tough catch. I think it's his offensive pass interference. You see Wicks extend his left arm and, and push Storm Duck. You know, the first angle gave us a great look at it, and you know he wins on the route. He probably didn't need to do it, but I thought he should have been called for offensive pass interference there. No flag there. First end goal for the Cavaliers. Armstrong rolling left, firing for the end zone and incomplete. He wanted Rashawn Henry but too high, 24 to 14, North Carolina, 421 to go in the second. Armstrong 15 out of 19, he's at 300 yards and a touchdown already. I mean, he's passed the ball incredibly tonight. You know, guys aren't necessarily getting the same type of separation that we've seen from North Carolina, but he's been as productive. Second and goal. Talapapo with the carry, nowhere to run. Miles Murphy was all over him. The defensive tackle, and that's a loss of two. Yeah, you know, Virginia throws a lot at you. They have a lot of success with how unique they are. That time they split both tackles out outside the numbers. And I think the, the, the fear is you could get a little too cute in some of these situations. Because now you've, you know, had great field position after the catch by Wicks. And now you find yourself in a third and goal outside the 10-yard line. Armstrong looking. Good time. Throws and incomplete. He wanted the tight end Woods, but Tony Grimes was there, but a flag on the play. So a flag down, 335 to go in the second quarter. 
Pass interference, number two, defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two yard line with an automatic first down. You, you think about Jelani Woods, he's six foot seven, and Tony Grimes is six feet tall. And you, just, you look at the average height of this UNC secondary, I mean, it's just no match. And I kind of just had his body inside of Grimes. We really know that Grimes had much option. So, first and goal for Virginia. Thompson. Trying to bust inside, got down close to the goal line. Tamari Fox with the tackle to deny him and bring up second and goal. It's fascinating to me that the goal line back appears to be a six foot four, 200 pound receiver, quarterback, running back, but that seems to be who they keep giving the ball to when they're down in tight. Second down and goal. Armstrong to throw. Now he's going to roll. He's going to throw to the end zone and a touchdown. That one caught by Woods, his big tight end. And Virginia, from a yard out, gets on the board again. Oh, what a game this is turning into. Virginia with another touchdown. Seven plays, 49 yards, and 244. It's really interesting because those first two drives, they kind of sputtered. I almost think it was kind of self-inflicted. But since that point, really been very little resistance from the Carolina defense. Dunkel for the point after. And it is good. Three-point game. It looked like North Carolina was really going to start to sail. Anything but started with a little bit of a dust-up. And then the interception. Cypress with that huge interception there at the goal line. And then Woods, the target, and a big one. You know, talking about Heisman candidate Sam Howell, and he's had great games against Virginia. How about Brendan Armstrong's first half? 301 yards, the most by a Virginia quarterback in a while. This will come out to the 25. 2004 in a half to have 300 yards, 301. In a half, in a half. And, and let's be honest, in an offense that isn't just like a throw it all over the place offense. You know, they're, they're a fairly balanced offense. So to do this through the air for Brennan Armstrong, as good as his start has been this season, Dave, it's still eye opening. Dontavian Wicks with five catches, 146 yards, and a sensational touchdown grab as well. So 24-21, North Carolina, and Sam Howell back to work. He's going to be flushed out of there. Going to run with it. He's going to cut. Trying to follow a blocker. Trying to get behind a receiver. Antoine Green picks up a big gain of 20 yards. It's a really good play by Sam Howell. He, he doesn't like it. He feels some pressure, and then he does a good job of escaping. And how about Josh Azuda? Look at 75, getting down the field, getting a block on Joey Blunt. Sam Howell's done a nice job of keeping things alive with his legs. Chandler's going to get the football, and he moves it across the 50-yard line. That'll be seven yards. On the carry, stopped by Antonio Clary, the free safety. So second and four for the Tar Heels. Trying to pick up their second win of the season. Virginia is trying to go to three and zero. Oh. And now out of the shotgun. Uh, we'll throw once again. They'll set up the screen. It's downs again. Picks up the first and then some as he cuts outside. First down and a 16-yard gain. I mean, you just see downs. I mean, he's just running a little bit of a bubble, and Joey Blunt's going to be there to make the play, but it's almost like you can't gauge how fast he actually is. You know, that's the thing with, with really fast players are able to do is run through the angles that defenders think that they need to take to get him down. Just so much speed. 
With Downs and Wicks, those two receivers on each side of the football having great nights. So are their quarterbacks. Howell taken down this time, though, as he's sacked on the play. Falmui got to him. And a loss of three. It's Falmui on Kieran Johnson, who, as we've said, he's the backup center. Brian Anderson normally is the starter. He's been banged up. And, you know, Sam stuck holding it. And that's a one-on-one -on -one block for your center on Falmui. It's a tough block. So a timeout, stopping the clock at 1.20. Our PNC Bank halftime report coming up with the guys in just a moment. A first-half recap. Clemson barely surviving. A very rocky day for the Tigers. And Miami struggling as well. Our guys are getting ready. Virginia Tech was trying to go to 3-0, but they lost to rival West Virginia today. Miami against Michigan State, South Florida. Miami losing by 21. Uh, kind of shocking to see some of the, those scores and you know, the Georgia Tech Clemson one certainly being being one of them. We saw Georgia Tech and it was crazy. And then you think about the other thing that's shocking. I mean, Dave, we're, we're looking at the score thinking, uh, is North Carolina going to run away with this? But a big stop on defense, a red zone turnover, and then the response that we've seen from this Virginia offense has been really outstanding, and it's been through the air. I mean, their offense is really, really exciting. It's dynamic. It has a lot of moving parts to it. But there's something about Carolina that gets them going mm. to a different level. Minute 20 to go. Second down and long here for Howell. He's on the move again. And he's going to try and run for the sideline. He is hit pretty hard there. He took a pretty nasty hit. Sam Howell going down and got stuck by Elliott Brown, the linebacker, on the keep. You know, Howell kind of relaxes as he gets to the sideline, and Noah Taylor gets a hold of him right here. You know, that's Elliott Brown with a pretty good shot on Sam Howell. And I think Sam's got to be careful. And the coaches have talked about it. Look, they like that he's running more and he's been effective in the run game, but you do need to protect yourself. I think Sam can do a better job of it there. Yeah, a reminder that helmet to helmet does not qualify by itself, of course, is targeting. He's going to loft this one down the left side, but he's going to throw it incomplete. That's intended for Caleb Hood. Incomplete. Intended for Hood, the running back, trying to air it out into the corner. So fourth down. And an official timeout, a man down. For Virginia, Noah Taylor, the linebacker who had a big one against Illinois, had two sacks in that game. A senior out of Silver Spring, Maryland, down on his back with a minute six before halftime. And you want to talk about a highly entertaining first half. <laughs> I mean, when we came out here, you know, to start the game, you mentioned the word electric because the, the crowd was great. There was certainly a buzz and an excitement. And, you know, you think, okay, well, maybe we'll see some fireworks to go along with it. And it seemed like it was going to be one-sided for a second. And then, then here comes Virginia with some fireworks of their own. Taylor will walk off under his own power. 24-21, North Carolina looked like they were a possession or two from maybe salting the game away. And Virginia said, not so fast. And a great comeback engineered by Brennan Armstrong and Dontavian Wicks in particular. Wicks a 40-yard touchdown reception. And of course, Cypress with the interception at the goal line. This is going to be a 54-yard attempt by Grayson Atkins. His career long is 51. With just over a minute to go, his kick is up, his kick is on the way, and his kick is no good. Atkins with a miss. And so Virginia will take over with 101 to go here first and 10 coming up for the Cavaliers well and because of the miss the field position now that Virginia is going to get 
That's a critical miss. I mean, it's an aggressive call going for a 54-yard field goal. He had the leg, he just missed off to the right. And, you know, that decision now, I think has really set Virginia up to be in a situation where they maybe have the lead going into halftime. Trailing by three with the football. They've got a minute to do something with it. Armstrong to throw on first down. Here's it out, and that's going to be complete to Hollins. Hollins coming out of the backfield. And a little scrap for it after the catch, but he picks up a first down and 13 yards. Yeah, and at midfield with 53 seconds left, all three timeouts available for Virginia. I think they, they're in good shape. From the 50-yard line, he'll throw once again, and another completed pass, another fight for that. Got it inside the 40 to Henry for 11. Mishan Henry, the senior. First down and 10 and moving quickly. 35 seconds to go before the half. Armstrong wants to get it in the air again. He's going for it. He's got a receiver but overthrown. Intended for Henry. Trying to strike into the end zone. Yeah, and I like taking a shot there. The one thing I will tell you though, third play of the drive when the receivers had run long routes. Think about this. It's basically running like three full-on sprints down the field. By the time you run that third play, I think the Virginia receivers were a little bit tired. But the incompletion you know, probably helps them, allowed them to substitute. Empty backfield again for Brennan Armstrong, who's had a great first half here at Chapel Hill. Wants to make it even better. He's going to step up and throw, and incomplete. He wanted Billy Kemp off the hands on the dive. So third down coming up. Yeah, and you see him here, he did a nice job of climbing and he kind of wasn't able to get his feet under him to deliver an accurate throw. And now, really interested to see what they do here. Third and 10, are you trying to, are you trying to get the first down? Are you trying to get some of it back to give yourself a better field goal opportunity? A really interesting call by Robert and I here. My guess would be they would attack down the field. Armstrong throws and complete once again. He got it to Wicks and a first down. With 17 seconds to go, that picks up 15 and a timeout. Yeah, you see Kemp running down the middle of the field to try to pull the coverage and then an in cut by Wicks. Good timing and accurate ball by Armstrong. And a right to the chin of Wicks. And I think this is a smart timeout. Yes, the clock's going to stop because you got a first down, but. As I said earlier, with with how quickly they were going and how deep the routes were that were being run by these Virginia receivers, I think using this timeout to talk things over on the sideline, but also give those guys a chance to catch their breath with two timeouts left is probably the right call. So Justin Dunkel, the kicker, getting loose on the sideline. He is two for four so far this season. Now one of the things quarterbacks should think about is coming out of a timeout in a two-minute situation, you have a really good chance of seeing a pressure, some type of blitz, because the defensive coordinator's got a chance to talk to his guys, and you get you have a chance to get lined up correctly to bring a pressure. So your antennas have to be up for it coming out of a timeout if you're a quarterback. First and 10, Thompson in motion. He looked that way. He's going to dump it off short. Here's Kemp. Kemp trying to wriggle free. Couldn't get to the 20. Three-yard gain. And another timeout. Virginia takes one here with 11 seconds left in the half. What's interesting is we see that wide receiver screen. I think Robert and I, offensive coordinator for Virginia, is he was anticipating the pressure. And so just decided to take it out of the quarterback's hands and say, look, we're going wide receiver screen. It turns out pretty soft coverage by the Carolina defense, which is why they were able to rally, make the tackle and bounce. Now Virginia coming off 538 total yards against Illinois in an eyes offense, 135 of those on the ground. And he really has a diverse offensive team, a quarterback who can really run and pass and a wide receiving core. Obviously they've got a gigantic tight end in Jelani Woods 
Well, North Carolina has actually done a pretty good job containing here tonight. They have, and you know, no, no bigger opportunity than the one they have right now to contain this offense, at least hold them to a field goal try before the half. How about these? 20 for 26 and over 340 yards for Brennan Armstrong in the first half here at Chapel Hill. Second down, seven. He wants to throw again, trying the end zone again, and it's going to be caught. And a touchdown, Virginia. He caught the ball in the end zone, Billy Kemp. He hauls it in for six. Virginia with the touchdown. Let's take a look. I mean, it looks like he has it with that left foot down in bounds. It's a great route by Billy Kemp. It's an even better throw by yeah. Brennan Armstrong. And yeah, the extra point is good, and Virginia has surged into the lead here with six seconds to go before halftime, 28 to 24. This is an amazing job. It's a slant and go. He, he turns the defender, Grimes, around. But I want people to understand, Billy Kemp is five foot nine. A lot of times when quarterbacks throw these throws, they're throwing to receivers that are well over six feet tall. To get that ball to drop down over Grimes to, to the five foot nine Billy Kemp, is an incredible throw, especially in that situation by Brennan Armstrong. Boy, we have seen a couple of weeks worth of outstanding catches and throws and only a half of football so far here at Chapel Hill. North Carolina will get the ball to start the second half. But Virginia with a tremendous comeback here when it looked like they were on the verge of maybe being run out of the building. Well, and I said after the missed field goal, Dave, I said, you know, Virginia now has an opportunity to go into the half with the lead. And as I said it and knew it was possible, I thought, how can that really be the case with how this game started? Tim, they were down 24 to 7, and it was looking pretty bleak at that time. Green will try and take it, but first down and 10, five seconds to go. You know, given by rule, the ball becomes dead. However, the ball would not be moved to the 25-yard line because the receiver did not complete the fair catch. The ball be put in play at the spot of the catch. First down. So six seconds to go. And what a second half we have set up for here. I mean, we've seen 52 points and over 750 yards. Going to run the football. They will keep it on the ground here for Chandler. The final play of the first half. Most of the plays were in the air. It was quite an air show by these two. And we are at halftime here at Chapel Hill. Virginia has grabbed the lead 28 to 24. And they are flying high heading into their locker room behind Brennan Armstrong, who just flat had a great first half. Had an incredible first half, and it's deflating to go into your locker room scoring 24 points in the first half and being down. He is 21 for 27, 364 yards, and three touchdowns in one half of football. Just incredible. Joey Blunt was shaken up on the last play. We are at halftime, and Virginia leading North Carolina. 28 to 24, we toss it down to Kelsey with Coach Mendenhall. Coach Mendenhall, your quarterback in this offense were outstanding there in the second quarter. What impressed you the most about the way they were able to respond? Man, just that so they keep answering. Uh, we got in a giant deficit, and they're just chipping their way back and got us the lead. So really impressed with their resiliency. It's clear that this is going to be a battle in the second half. The momentum keeps swinging. What will you tell your team in the locker room? No, we knew it was going to be a battle before we came. Thanks, Coach. Well, after this short break, Jordan Cornett, E.J. Manuel, Eric McLean, and Coach Richt 
for the PNC Bank Halftime Report. And then join us for what should be a wild second half at North Carolina. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Geico. How'd you like that first half? What a first half it was in the South's oldest rivalry. Virginia surging from 24-7 down to take a 28-24 lead. 761 total yards in offense by the two teams combined. We take a look at the Zaxby's first half stats. Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck. Tim, that was an amazing first half. It's an incredible first half, and to think that, you, you know, you look at it, Brennan Armstrong, over 100 yards, you know, more passing than Sam Howell. Mm -hmm. It just it speaks to, you know, that response, and clearly the critical error by Sam Howell in the red zone, kind of the turning point, but just the resiliency of both teams to go kind of punch for punch offensively has been a lot of fun to watch. Man, and, you know, does it continue? Or are we going to see, like, a four-minute lull before we see another 14 points Armstrong and Howell are living up to the billing as the two quarterbacks who have been at the top of their game in the ACC. An incredible first half, really, from Brennan Armstrong. 364 passing yards. He was 21 for 27. Three touchdown passes. Sam Howell, 249 yards and three touchdowns as well. And so North Carolina will take the football out as they will have possession to begin the second half. A moment ago, Kelsey Riggs with Mac Brown. Coach Brown, their offense really exploded there in the second quarter. What did you tell your team about containing them in the second half? I said it's two great quarterbacks that are having a great night, and the team that stops one of those two just a little bit is going to win. we got to get off the field on third down. They're six of eights. We missed too many tackles early. But uh, Armstrong's really, really good. Sam's really good. Momentum changed when we didn't score the first time and kicked the field goal when we are in the red zone, then threw the interception for the ball back out to the 50. we got to get momentum turned back, so we need to move the ball and score on this first drive. Thanks, Coach, thank you. Thank you. And they have the football. And they're going to keep it on the ground here for the carry. And that'll be Chandler to pick up four yards. Ty Chandler. So what is up the sleeve of Sam Howe? Usually quite a bit. Usually quite a bit. Mac Brown really emphasizes, you know, the, the first drive of the second half and, and clearly to, to swing momentum, but also try to get back on top. Boy, they had all the momentum in the world, but the Cavaliers came storming back. Here's Chandler in the open field. He's going to cut to the sideline. Now cutting back inside. Getting down to the 20. Getting down close to the 9-yard line before he is pushed out by Anthony Johnson. That's just a 60-yard scamper. It's an incredible run, and it's an awesome job down the field by Josh Downs. Blocking and then doing a good job of not blocking in the back. See him lay off. Devonta Cross and then gets back on him to help continue to block down the field. That's really smart football by Downs and a great run by Ty Chandler. First and goal, he spotted at the 10. Howell will hand off. And on a spin, once again, Chandler. Inching a little bit closer, what a run. Yeah, just look at it, it's that split zone. Tight end scrapes across the formation. Then Chandler with a good stiff arm, another good stiff arm. And then good effort down the field by Simmons and Downs. As I said, smart and look at Ty Chandler. You know, having a bit of a night as well. I guess there won't be any lull in this one. <laughs> They're relentless. Chandler again trying to bowl ahead inside the five-yard line. So he's the go-to back. Hunter Stewart with the stop. That picks up one hard-earned yard. Third and goal. Caleb Hood now in there as a running back. For North Carolina, third down and goal.
He's going to throw it. Hits his tight end and in for a six. Garrett Walston. His third catch of the season, but a five-yard touchdown reception. And Carolina wastes no time. It's a very similar play to the play that Sam Howe threw an interception on earlier. Only difference is they're moving right. Sam's got an easier angle to make the throw. And you know, I mentioned earlier about the tight ends being a little bit more involved to help this offense certainly do there in the red zone. So now it's North Carolina back in front. The fourth touchdown tonight for Sam Howell. Yeah, and it's a great response. Running the football with Ty Chandler and then the play action, move the pocket on the goal line. As our heels respond, the fireworks continue. So now North Carolina, right out of the gate of the second half, jumps in front once again, 31 to 28. And North Carolina to kick off. By the way, Ty Chandler already with 128 yards rushing on nine carries. Let's go down to Kelsey. Well, guys, right before the half, Wayne Tawalapapa actually went inside before the team. He's on the sidelines now with the towel over his head. His teammates have been coming up and hugging him, so it appears that he may be done for the day, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Senior from Hawaii who's pointing at his head there. Came into this with just 49 yards from 1,000 career yards, so it could have been a very big night. But he is out. Mike Hollins now in as the primary back for Virginia. Great comeback in the first half of the Cavaliers. That's going to be complete to Kemp. Kemp trying to muscle his way for some more, and there is a flag down. There is Face a mask, I think. But a flag dropped here, 12.43 to go on the third. Personal foul. Face mask. Offense. Number four. 15-yard penalty. First down. I actually thought that could have been called both ways. It was clearly a face mask by Billy Kemp and, and Trey Morrison, you know, had a little bit of the face mask as well. Looked like they get just get Kemp first, but it's a huge penalty because it was a good drive starter for Virginia with a nice completion to Kemp. Backs it up to their own 19 and brings up second down and 16. It's actually first and 16. Back to throw flush down to their Armstrong. He's got to run it, heading for the sideline. Last time that Virginia trailed by as many as 17 and won the game was against Old Dominion in 2019. They were down 17 to nothing, and they won that game 28-17. Yeah, this just seems like, you know, they, they took a significant punch from North Carolina. And they got up from the mat, and you know, it'd be interesting to see if North Carolina can continue to keep that tempo on offense. Second and 15 for Virginia. Kemp in motion, handoff for Hollins, countering the other way, and North Carolina found it very quickly. Gimmel got out there, the defensive captain, the guy that a lot of people are looking at in the next league up to play on Sundays. Yeah, and this is a great play by Gimmel. Misdirection run, and it looked like it was going to be big. And Gimmel's excited because he does an outstanding job of di diagnosing that. And really, if he doesn't get there, there's a chance that that run breaks into a big play for the Cavalier offense. And Carolina, the coaching staff, all the players just love that guy. Third down and 11. Armstrong will step up now, throw as he was getting tackled, and it's incomplete, broken up, and nearly intercepted by Don Chapman, number two. And it was the pressure from Tamon Fox, who kind of, you know, was wrapping his pressure underneath. You see him come inside on a little bit of a game by the defensive front, and that forces Armstrong to get rid of the football a little sooner than he wanted to, and Chapman really should pick that football off. It's right in between, you know, right in his hands, almost right to his face mask. So Jacob Finn to punt. 
Josh Downs back around the 35 yard line to receive here for North Carolina. Punts have been short tonight. Downs will take this one. He'll start it from the 25. Great speed. An electrifying player across the 40. Has some blocking. Getting down the sideline. And a big, big return. Finn, the punter, actually made the tackle. A 35 yard return. And some a little extra on that sideline as tempers are flaring up here in the South's oldest rivalry. It's actually a really Josh good punt. You punt him to the sideline right out by the numbers. But look at the wall that is created by that Carolina return team. They do such a good job of, of setting that up and then the speed of downs to get to the wall. Look at that wave of Carolina blue on the return to the wide side of the field. And after the play, some pushing and shoving on both sides. And a tight one, 31-28. North Carolina took no time at all marching down the field, getting points on the board to begin the second half. Here's Howell back to throw, dropping back, firing long, heading for the end zone over thrown. Emory Simmons is intended target the junior but not there. They were running a, a post corner combination and Simmons was on the post and I think Hal had Simmons. I think Hal also had the corner. You probably wish you could have led Simmons a little more towards the middle of the field rather than up the field. Second down 10. Quick toss again to the tight end, Walston. Walston scampering ahead, short of the 30. Picks up six. Joy Blunt with a tackle. And, and that's what they want to have happen. Joey Blunt, probably their best tackler, certainly is when you talk about the secondary players for Virginia. So they try to funnel things to him, and that's a good job in the open field against Garrett Walston. Third and four, so a lot of options here. A lot of different things they can do with the football. Powell hand off. Hood finds an opening as he churns ahead to pick up a first down. But you could really see him, Tim, becoming a tough runner over the course of his career. You know, I really think so. For a guy that was not even playing the position a year ago, to look the way that he Officials looked. Officials timeout for an injured player. The man down is Anthony timeout. Johnson, a corner for Virginia. So we will go away for the break as well. 9.57 to go in the third. Extra yard for Teachers Week in an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Josh Downs of Carolina has a special shout out. Teachers are such an underrated part in a children's life. I had the opportunity to be raised by one and I couldn't ask for a better mom. Her name is Tanya Downs and she teaches at Peachy Ridge High School in Georgia. Mom, I thank you for being a role model and a mentor to so many people. Thank you to all the teachers around the world. You guys are greatly appreciated. Nicely said, everybody has a favorite teacher. For me, Miss Camison in the second grade, she had little nicknames for all of us. Tim, you're a lot bigger than me. You will never get out of me what that nickname was. <laughs> Al back to throw, looking for the end zone. It's tipped away. Had an opportunity for a touchdown pass, but broken up by Devontae Cross, the strong safety intended for Walston. What a night Downs has had, huh? I mean, look at on six targets, you know, five catches for over 150 and two scores and you know, if you're Phil Longo, you're probably happy that, he, you know, he's got five catches, but you want to figure out a way he can get five more just because Virginia really just hasn't been able to run with them. Yeah, not to mention 38 return yards. Hood will be dropped as he tried the center of the line and tripped up by Joey Blunt after picking up two. Yeah, and that's Joey Blunt. I mean, he just looked like, look at him. I mean, he looks like a safety, but he kind of is forced to play as a linebacker at times but then they also will ask him to be a deep middle of the field safety it's a, a a tough task to run in space with Josh Downs but then make a play 
at the line of scrimmage against Caleb Hood. Man, he plays with great, great energy. Third down and eight now. Carolina on top by three. Howell going to run with it. Gets across the 20. Still moving. He picks up a first down. We came on the air talking about his running talent and how dangerous, Tim, he's become. And this saves him because they're, they're trying to fake a wide screen. They're trying to fake the swing screen to, to, the wide, to the running back and then get a wide receiver in behind it. And Sam's forced to take off and run with the football and on the tackle, which Noah Taylor was involved in, he's on the ground. Yeah, the linebacker Noah Taylor is hurt. 31-28, back with more in a moment. The senior Noah Taylor had to come off, but he looked like he was ready to come right back on, so a very good sign there. And a key part of the Virginia defense. First and 10, though, for North Carolina. Trying to punch it in again. They've already done it once here in the second half. Hood's going to try and bounce outside. Now cut in and continues to churn. Very tough runner. Stopped by Nick Jackson. A five-yard pickup. You see the way that that Hood runs. I mean, he's got some power to him. Listed at 230. And I think this area of the field kind of has a threat to be able to punch it in. It's pretty good to have Hood in the game. Sam Howell, two wide outs to his left. He's going to keep. Trying to get in the end zone. Spins inside around a five. Blunt with a tackle. Again, that's where they want to funnel it. You know, it, it's they try to close off the A and B gaps inside. Try to close off those inside runs and spill it to 29. And listen, we've seen him make some tackles in the open field against running back. Certainly Sam Howell in the open field. That's exactly what Virginia is looking for offensively. And I would expect some type of play action like we saw on the previous trip down to the red zone for North Howell Carolina. Howell has rushed for 71 so far tonight. It's Hood. Hood straight on. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. From five yards. Went right at Blunt there, and he could not make the play. Did not make the tackle. And North Carolina opens it up 37 to 28. Yeah, and they want to funnel it to Blunt, and there he is, Joey Blunt at 195 pounds against the true freshman Caleb Hood at 230. And listen, meet in the hole, most times low man wins, but Hood able to just kind of run through the contact. So the second half is beginning the way the game started with North Carolina in a full head of steam and now up 38 to 28. I mean, it's really incredible. And you have to think with the way Bronco Mendenhall kind of coaches his team, the way he talks to his team, the way he talked about resilience to Kelsey going in at halftime, that we're going to see some fight back from this Virginia football team. I think you can bet on that. Brennan Armstrong's had a terrific ball game. What a game it has been in the South's oldest rivalry. Carolina three touchdowns on the first eight plays. They led 24-14. Armstrong bringing them back. And the last three minutes on fire was on fire the entire half. And now touchdowns on the first two drives of the second half. Tar Heels back in command, but for how long? Well, and I think that's why this drive is going to be important, Dave. You, know, you talk about kind of, you know, racing out in front like we saw in the first half. Kind of get the sense of like, hey, are, 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 they, are they pulling away a little bit? And if so, can you respond? Out to the 25 it comes. That's where Armstrong and the Cavaliers will begin this drive. North Carolina coming in, ranked number 21 in the country. They have lost the last four games to Virginia, last winning in Charlottesville in 2016. Virginia digging for their third win. They steamrolled Illinois last weekend. And now first and ten for Armstrong. Looking to throw short. And upended out of the backfield, Mike Hollins. After the catch, Tony Grimes with the hit after a gain of two. Second and eight.
Armstrong, a guy who can run it as well. He has a couple of rushing touchdowns this season. Both of these quarterbacks. Oh, he got free of a tackler. He's going to fire downfield. That's going to be caught. That's Wicks again. And he makes extra yards after the catch. I'll tell you what, this is all quarterback and receiver. You know, you get some unique motion into the backfield. North Carolina decides to come after it and blow it up. But Armstrong, just too strong in the pocket, is able to escape through contact and then get rid of it quickly. Outstanding adjustment to the football by Wicks. 22 yards on that game. Now close to midfield. Armstrong again show, showing a pass and off to the sideline, and that'll be complete. Armstead will make the catch, and that's six yards. Ira Armstead, who is the number two or number three quarterback, depending <laughs> I mean, on the day. It's remarkable. They just have a bunch of guys that want to get out on the football field in any role. Fires again, and for two yards, going to pick up just a very short gain. Rodriguez with the catch. Jacob Rodriguez, he is yet another quarterback. And Wicks a little bit dinged up as he comes off. They do not want him off for very long. Dontavian Wicks has had a tremendous game and made one of the great catches you're going to see all season long for a touchdown in the ACC. And that was the first thing I thought of when I saw him go down, have to come off the field. Having him off the field on third down, certainly not ideal for the Cavaliers. Armstrong again, alone in the backfield. Third and short for Virginia. Thompson in motion. Armstrong to throw. Good time, good pocket. He rifles that one incomplete. There is a flag down intended for Jelani Woods. But a flag. Offside. Defense. Number 10. Five yard penalty. First down. So first down. Yeah, it's Desmond Evans at the top of the screen. He just jumps off sides. He's in the neutral zone when the ball is snapped, and that's a critical error on a third down just to hand Virginia a first down by jumping. Yeah, big first down here. Thompson on the move again. Armstrong with good time. Rifles that one, and it's going to be caught. And what a catch on that play. That's Henry going airborne with Kyler McMichael on the coverage. Take a look. It's a great catch. It's also another excellent throw from the far hash to the far sideline by Brennan Armstrong. He's got to get it over the flat defender, but flatten out Henry enough that the safety over the top can't make the play. What a great throw. Armstrong 5 for 5, 53 yards on this drive. Adding to his sensational game. Looking to throw some pressure for the end zone and incomplete. Trying to strike again, but incomplete. Good coverage. Yeah, just a man to man opportunity with the defender's back turned to the football. That's another nice throw. Uh, Cedric Gray is happy with the result, but a really good throw by Armstrong that I think probably should have been completed. Intended for Fields. Already 426 passing yards for Armstrong. Empty again. Looking short and underthrown and complete. Intended for Kemp. Good pressure there. Tamon Fox, the all ACC honorable mention. Let's get out of Kelsey. I was on the Virginia sideline, and Wicks has been up and down the sideline running for the athletic trainers, really just saying, I'm okay, I want to go in. It seems like it's something with his right leg. Ran a few times, but he kept giving them thumbs up, and now ran down to the sideline. Looked like he was about to go in, guys. Yeah, he's got the helmet back on, Kelsey. Third down and 10. With about five minutes to go on the third in what has been some game here at Chapel Hill. Armstrong rifles again. It's going to be incomplete. Wanted his tight end who wanted the flag on the play. None forthcoming. 
Tony Grimes with the coverage. Yeah, I think that's two plays in a row. As you see Jelani Woods kind of has his body inside, but Armstrong can't deliver a, a, a good pass. It's the pressure from Taman Fox right here. He's going to squeeze the left, the right tackle back into Armstrong's lap. And see, that doesn't allow him to follow through, which is why that ball is high and outside the frame of Jelani Woods' body. So dunk on for what will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. And he hits this one, and it is good. So Virginia gets points, and they pulled it within 38 to 31 with under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, last July, the Tar Heels lost one of their biggest fans. Miranda Randy Roberts was a longtime football and basketball season ticket holder here in North Carolina, attending her first game back in 1953. She is also the mother of a member of our graphics crew helping us with tonight's game, the indispensable Caroline Roberts. Miranda was both an elementary and Sunday school teacher. First and foremost, a Tar Heel fan. Also a great mom, we can tell you that. There's no doubt about it. And Carolina, Caroline was excited to be back here in her Carolina blue. She wears very proudly. Well, this is one where these fans have no time to take a breather. Halftime was it. 38-31 North Carolina. Under five to go in the third quarter. What is in store the rest of the night? Two big-time offenses are clashing here in this, the South's oldest rivalry. And North Carolina to come out on offense again with the Heisman hopeful Sam Howell. When you talk about a special career, he threw more touchdown passes through his sophomore year than Trevor Lawrence did, 68 to 66. I remember, you know, his freshman year, Dave, when we had, you know, these Carolina games, putting his numbers up with guys that, you know, playing on Sundays or guys that were breaking records in college football. And, you know, our first meeting with Mac Brown, he compared him to Colt McCoy, who obviously Mac had a lot of success with at Texas. So that was pretty high praise before he ever took a snap in college football. And it's just gotten better and better. He's going to throw here on first down through behind his receiver. And no flag on the play. He wanted Brown, Choffrey Brown, but no on that one. And I feel like that's the type of stuff that, that this offense can really eliminate. Choffrey Brown isn't even looking for the football, but he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Sam is trying to give him a shot. And so, you know, it's, it was the rapport with guys like Daz Newsome uh, and, and Deami Brown that I do think is going to take time. These guys have the same speed, if not better, but... They don't yet have the same rapport with their quarterback. Deami, very different personality than his little brother. As Chandler will take that one off to the left, trying to cut back in before he's tripped up. He's going to gain nine on that carry. Ventrell Cypress had a gigantic interception and ran it back, what, 60 yards in the first half. Tripped him up. Third down and one. Look at all these guys who've gone on to the NFL. They are missing from a year ago and will stay on the ground again on the carry just in terms of percentage of offensive production when you think of two star wide receivers you think of two running backs that just made things go and you know Ty Chandler it's one of the reasons he's been a nice you know addition to this program coming over from Tennessee because look you lose that type of production having a veteran back to go along with Caleb Hood Clearly a help. Chandler again got away from one tackler, spun away, but he's going to lose yards, going to lose one. On a stop by Noah Taylor, who came back from an injury earlier, very strong. Tough guy to keep off the field for Virginia. Brings up second down and 11, 38-31 North Carolina. Yeah, and you see there, you know, Noah Taylor comes off the edge. He's unblocked. And I think Nick Howell, defensive coordinator, for Virginia probably feels like he's got to find ways to take chances, you know, find ways to get this Carolina offense off schedule. Second and 11. Chandler again, an opening. Off to the left sideline before he is pushed out by Antonio Clary, but he picks up 21 yards. 
Yeah, and you see it, they're just going to end up blocking this well this side here. And look at Chandler. You know, pressure is coming off to the right. And so the blitz from the right side kind of leaves them a little bit exposed. Kind of like hey, you're foul. guessing. Face mask. Defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Here's the penalty. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean that could have been a double face mask. I mean, again, you know, I, I mean, obviously you can, you can touch someone's face mask, but grabbing it is where you get in trouble. And sometimes just getting your hands stuck in there yeah. is the issue. But it goes against Virginia. They have a man down. Joey Blunt has been down a couple of times. And look, Warm he, night. And he missed last year because of an injury and was really banged up fighting through a lot a year ago. And yeah, 316 remaining here in the third. Blunt really an indispensable guy. We take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Geico the senior the free safety out of Atlanta. And, and he is so critical because Virginia wants to play five defensive backs and he's one of these players that's versatile enough to play down in the box but be a, a deep field player and you know, he kind of makes everything go so injuries to him I think really become a problem for Virginia defensively and I think has to in some ways change the way they call their defense he has 11 tackles in this one and let's see if he winds up yeah he's going inside the medical tent Three minutes to go here in the third. First down and ten. On the ground, it's Hood. Dining outside, trying to get that edge. First down, Clary with the tackle, but not before he picks up a first and 15 yards. It's a really good job. Hunter Stewart's going to come on a pressure and watch the job of sorting this out by North Carolina offensively. Maybe get called McKeithen. For a bit of a hold or a grab, reaching out and extending like that, but gets just enough of him. And then Caleb Hood to kind of just trust your footwork to stay skinny and get through the hole. That's a nice job by a run, ba a young back. First and ten at the 11-yard line of Virginia. Carolina knocking on that door again. Howell's going to keep it. Howell. Trying to scamper inside the five, and he does as he is taken down by Noah Taylor, but he gains seven. Yeah, and Sam's done a nice job of, of continuing to fall forward on some of these runs. You know, just be elusive enough that you can't, that you're not taking a big hit, and then you're falling forward. And, you know, you'd be thrilled with a, a seven yard run on first down, six yard run down in the first, down in the red zone on first down. North Carolina piling up. The yards on the ground. Second down here for Sam Howell. Two wideouts split to the left. And off once again is Chandler into the end zone. He scores from five yards out. Ty Chandler, the transfer from Tennessee, scampering into the end zone. Well, it was a passing game early, but now this run game for North Carolina is starting to just lean on this Virginia defense and you know Virginia had some words about which team was the tougher team and which team kind of you know how they would respond to that and there's been a toughness with this group up front for North Carolina and the way these backs have run the football absolutely Atkins on for the extra point and he will nail that and Blunt is heading off to the locker room in some pain and Virginia trailing 45 to 31. That would be a big answer for Brennan Armstrong as we get close to the fourth quarter. <laughs> sure would, but the way that he has played, I want to put anything past him to go back to that Joey Blunt shot of him walking off of the field. It did not look good with the way that he was kind of holding his arm and that is not what Virginia needs. Somebody that's so passionate with how they play yeah. has such great instincts, and I think that the rest of the defense really feeds off of him. Let's go to Kelsey. 
Well, Ben, they definitely do. That's something that we talked to defensive coordinator Nick Howell about this week is just everything, the intangible things that Joey Blunt brings and that he means to this defense. He came out of that tent, was holding his right arm kind of funny, as you mentioned. Looked like they were checking out maybe his lower arm wrist area. And you could tell from the look on his face, very disappointed to have to be going in there. Actually, he got halfway down the sidelines and just stopped walking for a second and kind of looked at the trainers and they looked at his arm again and then he kept walking. So definitely disappointing for him and a huge loss for this defense because he means a whole lot to this Virginia team. By the way, we are now at 999 combined total yards in this game. Just incredible. Mm. Armstrong looking to add to that. Going up top. Fires that one. It's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by North Carolina. Armstrong heaving it up there. And North Carolina getting the pick. It's Conley. Jaquarius Conley as he has his second interception of the season. Flag down on the play. Will go against Virginia. Well, off of the play fake, Armstrong is trying to hit this go route, but he stares at it, and Conley just runs over the top. That's all he does. Watch Armstrong. He just looks at it, and then look at the ground that Conley is able to cover because the quarterback's indicator looking at it. Then as field is declined, after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, intercepting team. <laughs> And how about Conley, by the way, Dave? We saw that on cast four, on his hand. This is his first of the game. Got a cast on his left hand, and if we can see that, that interception, you know, he kind of uses two hands originally to, to catch right. the football, but I think he then kind of takes that casted left hand off of the ball. What tremendous athleticism that Aquarius Conley, who Mac told us was going to be the toughest player on the field when he was out there. Penalty going against Carolina, backing him up. Inside their own 30. And Henderson with the carry. He'll gain one. Look at the celebration. I mean, Deami Brown, who's decided to come back and celebrate with, <laughs> with his younger brother's team. Anderson again. You guys, Diami has really been involved this whole time. He might be playing in the National Football League, but he looks like he's one of the players on the sidelines. In the first half, he was trying to get the crowd involved when the guys were trying to get them hyped up on a third down stop. And then when his brother scored that touchdown, he was the first one waiting on the sidelines there to give him a hug. So I'm sure he's enjoying his time playing with the Washington football team, but he's enjoying being back here too, it looks like. No, he looks like a kid again. <laughs> no one wants to leave college, Dave, let's be honest. I don't know why you would want to leave here, that's for sure. His downs, slicing inside, and he'll pick up another first down. King with the stop, but not before an 11-yard gain. And Howe continues to rack up big yards as well. He's approaching 300 yards. Another player down, Mandy Alonzo down for Virginia. The big defensive end. 26 seconds remaining here in the third. I, I will tell you, Dave, I, you know, I know a lot was made of Mandy Alonzo's comments about kind of being a tougher football team. It's been a really impressive response. Let's as Alonzo heads off the field. Yeah, and by to a this, chorus of boos, by the yeah, way. I mean, by the way, too, like, you know, a fair number of guys cramping, it appears, on this Virginia defense, you know, with the, the, the tempo and the pace of play that we've seen from Carolina. I understand they're going to look at targeting here at the end of the run on that last play, so it is under review. Last seconds of the third, so a booth initiated initiated a review here. Let's see if he ducks his head on this. And it almost looks like. 
Yeah, that's Cone King. Downs may already be out, but down. Well, listen, it, you know, kind of the safety slash saber position is already, you know, pretty thin. You think Nick Grant was out for tonight, so Cohen King and Antonio Clary going to play in a little bit more. Joey Blunt out now as well. So the six-foot junior from Culpeper, Virginia, they're looking at him on targeting. We have not had a targeting call tonight that is held up. And you know, it's interesting. I mean, he's definitely leading with After his After further helmet. review, there was targeting on the play by number nine defense. He is disqualified from the game. 15 yard penalty, first down. King is disqualified, targeting. Yeah, you know, it's just, he's leading with the crown of his helmet. And so, even though you don't have a defenseless player, you have a runner. Playing defensive back is hard. I, I will tell you, it is hard because, you know, you play too high, you get run over. You know, you, you play too low, you know, and it's hard to take your head out of it. And it's the right call in that situation. It's smart that they looked at it. Meanwhile, Sam Howell, 11 out of 18, 270 yards, four touchdowns tonight. Brennan Armstrong, 426 yards, three touchdowns. Each of them with an interception as they're going to let the quarter run out. Ty Chandler is rushed for 167 yards for North Carolina. And Josh Downs, 169 yards and two touchdowns receiving. North Carolina came out in a big way and they outscored Virginia 21 to 3 in the third to open up a 45 31 lead going to the fourth. Carolina faithful having a great time with their football team as we get set for the fourth quarter. Great to see the kids having fun again. It really is. I mean, the student section obviously did not look like that a year ago, and mm. I think these players are embracing it. Sam Holly company on the attack again. Already a 45-31 hitting in the fourth. He's going to keep it run and tiptoeing out. A flag down. In fact, about five of them after he stepped out. Just seconds into the fourth quarter. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Number 88. Offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's the tight end, Morales. With that infraction, so they will back it up here. Yeah, and it's just not a block you can make anymore. See him go low, and I think there were about six flags thrown. Everyone saw it. And really too bad for the Carolina offense because it was really a perfectly timed play call. A nice pickup for Sam Howe. Who does have 13 rushes, 93 yards. Mm. Back that up 16 yards. On a carry, Henderson. Anderson still churning ahead. And Stewart with the tackle. Got 14 back there. So again, this is really well blocked and good finish to the run. And, and again, another Virginia defender down. This time it's Elliot Brown. Elliot Brown, the linebacker, will take another break. A lot of men down here for Virginia. That looks like Elliot Brown is out just on a cramping situation, but a lot of guys leaving the field for Virginia. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, Nick Grant, who we're looking at right there, senior, you know, played corner a year ago, is playing safety now. Joey Blunt, we saw leave the field. And yeah, Grant had made, what, 26 starts. Unable to go tonight. As a talented free safety, first down and ten. And we'll run it here with Chandler. 
Been a very dependable guy. He'll pick up five there. He's also a guy who can catch the football. You can do a lot of different things with him. Yeah, he's just such a, a I don't know, all-around back. And you know, I said it earlier, with their losses, he just kind of becomes this, this solid player for them with experience that they could trust as they develop some of their younger backs that certainly have a bright future here as well. He's up to 171 yards rushing on 15 carries and a touchdown. They want him to touch it again, but it's going to be Howell. He's going to go around the right side. Howell's going to be dragged down inside to 10. Noah Taylor denied him a touchdown, but a first down for 14 yards. Goes the North Carolina quarterback who's been running wild tonight. That's over 100, 107 yards. I mean, I would not have guessed that Sam Howell was going to have over 100 yards rushing tonight, but he's been smart on his decisions of when to pull the football down and run with it and there's another great example of that. Sam Howell trying to find the end zone again up 45 to 31. And a timeout Carolina. So a timeout on first and goal for North Carolina. Another impressive offensive performance for Howell and the Tar Heels. You thought for a while that maybe Virginia would make one of those comebacks that we saw in the first half, but they've been stunted. They've been stunted. I think a big part of the reason why is defensively they're getting banged up. We see guys cramping, coming off the field. And, you know, and I think when you look at Virginia offensively, Wayne Talapapa was out. Seemed like that maybe gets them a, a little bit out of sorts in terms of how they want to substitute people. And so, yeah, it, that, that's been a bit of the difference because nothing has stopped this Carolina offense. Certainly not. I mean, Howell has been brilliant. On the ground, 107. In the air, 270. Still a lot of time left in this one. And 626 yards of offense for North Carolina. 433 for Virginia, but only eight yards rushing for the Cavaliers. Where Carolina has truly excelled. Powell's been a big, big part of that. He'll take it. Pushing ahead to the five yard line before he is stacked up. And stopped by Nick Jackson. Flag down. Ooh. In the final seconds of that play. A lot of penalties all of a sudden in the last several minutes. Why, well, and you may be heard me. Darius Bratton comes flying in well after the whistle and takes a shot. Lower left corner here. Watch Darius Bratton here. The whistle's been blown. Mm. And, you know, that. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number eight, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Senior from Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah, that's not good football there. And I feel like I've seen a couple of things out of Virginia that are, I would say, are uncharacteristic of them. You know, we saw Famui you know, essentially, you know, take a shot at a player with his helmet off. And, and to see that with Braddon well after the whistle as Sam Howell, his forward progress was stopped and was just being held up. So it'll be first and goal at the three. Chandler the back. Howell under center. He's going to roll out and fire. And a touchdown. That one caught by Morales. As he slid down in the end zone. And another touchdown for the Tar Heels. And now North Carolina is sitting very pretty at home here at Chapel Hill. Carolina does a good job. They, they line up in a formation, they shift, and then they go under center, which they almost never do. They definitely catch Virginia by surprise with the play action. Atkins with the point after, 52 to 31. And it's been mostly on the ground in the second half for Carolina, but this time it's the play action in the goal line and Sam Howell, yet another touchdown pass to Morales.
ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. It's been a sensational night for the North Carolina offense. Maybe not exciting for everybody, but 52 to 31. North Carolina getting real comfortable now, about 12 minutes to go in the contest. And the Tar Heels have not had to punt once tonight. Which is remarkable. And I will tell you, I, and in all of the times that we have seen Virginia in person, their defense has been impressive. You know, they cause confusion. They've got players that have great length, that are smart, that are not usually caught out of position. So to put up 52 points and to have time left in this football game and not punt the football is remarkable. Sam Howell with five touchdown passes in the game. Brennan Armstrong, his counterpart with three and 426 yards passing. But Sam Howell has also been outstanding on the ground with 112 rushing yards on 15 carries. Ty Chandler has rushed for 171 yards for North Carolina. Armstrong back at it, hits his tight end Woods. He'll pick up a first down. Jelani Woods, he's a guy everyone was talking about coming into this game and with great reason 122 receiving yards against the Illini they had no answer for him but North Carolina has done pretty good work on him they, they have done a pretty good job on him and Jay Bateman said he, he looks like LeBron James which I think is probably a, a fairly yes. fairly good comparison and yeah, Virginia keeping it on the ground here under 12 minutes to go and the carry by Holland stopped by Ray Bohasek all ECC honorable mention, a four-yard pickup, and Woods coming off. Actually coming back in. Second down and six. 52 to 31, Carolina. Over the middle and incomplete. He wanted Keaton Thompson, but threw behind him. That yeah, ball's a little bit behind, and, and Chapman probably had a chance to come up with his second pick of the night. Not able to corral that one. And I think that is, that is an example of it's not a perfect throw, but when you're playing a quarterback at wide receiver, a throw behind like that you know, can end up turning into something bad. Third down, six for Virginia. Strong flushed out of there on the move. Throws to the sideline, and it's going to be Woods with the reception. They will pick up a first. First down and 10, forthcoming. Well, that's impressive arm strength there, and it's a good job of working for your quarterback by Woods. He's kind of running the inside fade. Looks like they maybe just want to throw it up to him, and then Armstrong escapes outside the pocket, and without his feet underneath him, from the middle of the field, I think makes an outstanding throw to Woods on the sideline. He has caught a touchdown. First and 10, Armstrong again. He's going to throw long this time. And it's going to be overthrown over Rayshon Henry. Trying to strike into the end zone again. And there's Joey Blunt. He is in a sling, obviously, and done for the night. You know, when he left holding that arm, you made the comment, Tim, I think very appropriately that, you know, a lot of hearts sank on the Virginia side, and I mean their fans as well. Well, and I think, Dave, I mean, you and I have seen these guys play enough. There are certain players that they're only going to the locker room if something is really wrong, and I would put Joey Blunt in that category. On the ground, that's Rodriguez, one of the quarterbacks, taking the handoff. He picks up five yards. Third down. It was a terrific comeback when they were down big early in the game for Virginia as they stormed back. But the way North Carolina came out of their locker room to begin the second half was incredibly impressive. 14 very quick points to really capture the game. Third down, five. On the scamper, Darrington, nothing there. Well, Dave, you know, you talk about, you know, the response coming out of halftime. Mac Brown talks about that, that middle eight, the last four, 
of the first half, the first four of the second half. Well, North Carolina lost the last four of the first half, but they certainly won the first four, and now they have a chance to really kind of start to slam this door shut with how they play here on fourth down. And Wildcat here with Thompson in at quarterback. And now Armstrong back. Brennan Armstrong. Fourth down and three. On the snap. Dumps it over the middle. It's Thompson. Thompson spinning free of a tackler. And he's going to come up with a nice gain of 15. Stopped by Morrison and Chapman. I will say they're bringing pressure inside, and that's going to vacate the, you know, that, that short area underneath for the shallow cross and Thompson. And I'm really impressed with kind of his versatility. I mean, he doesn't look like much of a, you know, he would be a runner from out of the backfield at his size because he's so tall, but he's done a nice job with it, and he's clearly been great in the passing game, and now he's going to take the snap from center. On the depth chart, they list him as college football player. That's all he is, Thompson. He's going to pass this one, head for the end zone, and almost intercepted by North Carolina. On the coverage was Tony Grimes as he laid out in the end zone. Incomplete. And this stuff is hard to defend. You know, Jay Bateman said to us, I don't know how they figure out, you know, when they have the time to practice all that. Looks like quarterback run. And then he's going to pull it back. I do think it looked like we maybe could have had guys downfield as Ola with Timmy. Seemed like he's blocking down the field. And look, think how hard it is to, mm. to be running inside runs, to be running routes. And then, oh, by the way, with your receivers, receiver gloves on, we want you to throw an accurate pass right. to a tight end running down the field. Second down, 10. Woods with a catch. He's upended at the 15. Pretty good hit by Grimes again. And a gain of nine for Virginia. Under eight and a half. Third down and short. I feel like these are the scenarios that North Carolina has all kinds, excuse me, Virginia has all kinds of plans. As you see Keaton Thompson look like he's going to take a snap. And now it's Armstrong moving off to a receiver spot. And Thompson will take it. He'll scamper to his left. And got stuck right around the 10-yard line. Stopped by Cedric Ray. See, why this is critical is when, when certain people come out on the field, you think, okay, I'm defending a spread offense. Well, then, now you have Keaton Thompson take the snap, and they're running power with an extra blocker because the quarterback's a runner. And so it makes calling defenses hard. And I think between that and the substitutions, as we see them running onto the field now, or how Virginia can stress you, but it's been a nice response in the second half by North Carolina. First and goal for Virginia. And the pitch. It's Kemp. Kemp trying to get inside. And he dives to the pylon. And a touchdown. Let's see if he got in. You know what's interesting? I, I don't believe he was. And I think that left foot might be out. I think he steps out of bounds. But what's interesting with Armstrong, he gives that fake, ducks underneath. But then I think the ball is, is thrown forward. No stepping out of bounds with that left Royal foot right Field there. Royal a touchdown. Now there was ruled a touchdown on the field. The ruling on the previous play of a touchdown is under further review. So reviewing it right now, it's 6.53 to go in the fourth. But on the field ruled a touchdown. I know they're reviewing the touchdown. Here's the interesting thing, is you have guys downfield. The ball is definitely thrown forward. Now, is it thrown across the line of scrimmage? Because they're running the option. It should be a lateral pitch mm -hmm. if the play works the way it was designed. Now, because Armstrong had that little fake initially, he then throws it forward, and I'm not so sure 
He didn't throw it across the line of scrimmage when you got guys down. There's a lot going on. Yeah, it is scored this to is pass. This is like yep. backyard football because it was definitely traveled forward. And then obviously what they're looking at is that right there, which is left foot out of bounds prior to Kemp making his way into the end zone. So to play under review, the touchdown. I mean, I'm seeing that foot out, Dave. You seeing that foot I am. out? Okay. Heck of an effort there by Kemp to get to the pylon, but looked to us like he had already stepped out. Not by much, but no, looks like he did. Not by much at all, and you know, almost wonder if this is one of those things. Like, I mean, it looks to us. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. So touchdown is going to stand. It was that close, and Kemp with a heck of a play to get into the it, end zone. It's a great play. It's a great play by Armstrong. It's not how it was designed. He ends up, you know, shoveling it forward. And they're going to go for two. 52 to 37, under seven minutes to go. So, got the sheet in front of me here. You know, I'm not sure why you're chasing it here. Still down a couple of scores. Yeah, Armstrong's going to throw. Hits Woods and a two-point conversion. So that'll make it 52 to 39. Interesting call. But a flag is down. So a touchdown after the review, then a two-point conversion, but a flag. And they will huddle here. Deep into the fourth quarter. There is no foul for offensive pass interference. The try is good. So we will go to a break. 6.53 left in this contest. 52-39 North Carolina. Stick around after the game for the huddle. Jordan Cornett, E.J. Manuel, Eric McLean, and Coach Richt for a complete breakdown of all the ACC games today. That's tonight after we wrap things up right here on ACC Network and also on the ESPN app. High-scoring game. That's exactly what we anticipated. North Carolina with the upper hand under seven minutes to go. And Virginia about to kick off 52-39 Tar Heels. Trying to put an end to this four game losing skid to Virginia. Here in the South's oldest rivalry. Tim Hasselbeck, Dave O'Brien, Kelsey Riggs with you on a beautiful night here at Chapel Hill. Please reset the clock. Please reset. Please reset the game clock to seven minutes, 11 seconds. It was erroneously run by the crew after the touchdown. 7-11 on the game clock, please. Thank you. Oh, good use of erroneous. I was going to say, nice little call out of the crew, too. Yes. Just putting them on blast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I think there might be a meeting on Monday. <laughs> so 7-11 remaining on the short kick, which will roll out. And a flag there. As we take a look at our Bojangles big moment of tonight's game. Well, I mean, there are so many moments to choose from. I think we got to go to some of these big ones from Sam Howell. How about the throw to Josh Downs and then, you know, move the pocket play. It seems like whatever they're asking him to do, whether it was on the run, deep through the air, off of play action, kind of found a way to make it happen. And it's been a pretty tough, gritty performance by Sam as well. You know, so often we see him just making plays from inside the pocket, but look at this. Just the fourth ACC player with five touchdown wow. passes and 100 rushing yards. And let's be honest, I mean, I don't think anyone thinks of him as the same type of rusher as those players right there, but he has been tonight. Our Bojangles big bow moment.
Trying to add to those outstanding numbers. Going to keep it on the ground once again. And Ty Chandler with the carry. He'll gain three. Expect them to do a lot of that. Their ground game has been exceptional. Chandler is up to 174. They have rushed for 364 yards. And Virginia, only 26 yards on the ground. Wow. I mean, it, you know, coming into this game, I, I would have thought that Virginia was going to have the the rushing advantage, you know, with the offensive line experience they have, the backs, the way they utilize various players like Thompson and Armstrong. That's a big story with the offensive line of North Carolina being so successful as Chandler carries again, ducks inside. The three offensive linemen, and I mean big names, you know, didn't practice this week. Well, Izudu I, and Anderson and Tucker didn't even practice at yeah, all. It's a great point, Dave, and by my count throughout the game, we've seen, you know, Ed Montalus and Izudu. We've seen Keyron Johnson and Brian Anderson in there. You know, McKeithen has been in most of the game, but Jordan Tucker and William Barnes have rotated at right tackle. And so they've played a bunch of different guys in this football game. And they have responded in a big way for North Carolina. Howell with a short toss. Look out for Downs again as he takes off down the left sideline, adding to a sensational game. Josh Downs, you talk about someone who is fast becoming a fan favorite. He picks up 25. And you just think when he has area to work, you know, which you're going to find in these offenses where you run, run pass options, where you can just sit down as a defender squeezes in to defend the run, the catch and run opportunities for Josh Downs in this offense are just so tremendous. 5'10 sophomore from Sewanee, Georgia. Came in through two games with 16 catches. And in this one, he has seven more. Just in this game, he has the football again. And he will dive down close to the 26-yard line. A nine-yard pickup. So he has gone over 200 receiving yards, 203. And Sam Howell has gone over 300, 307 now with five touchdowns. I mean, the, the amount of just nights that are they're incredible. I mean, Downs' night's incredible. Howell's night's incredible. Chandler's night's incredible. You could say the same thing for guys on the other side as well. And yeah, Brennan Armstrong, 483 yards, four touchdowns. His team down 52 to 39. And they hand off as Chandler again. He picks up six more. He's got 180 yards. And the movement that we are seeing from this North Carolina offensive line, again, probably after you know feeling like they were called out by Andy Alonzo. I mean, they're essentially running it right now. You know, when people are expecting you to run the football, that's hard to do. But they're doing it with success. 3.38 to go in this contest. Al hands off again. Chandler bouncing outside, looking to stay in for a few more, and he did before taking a hit. And driven out by Long and another flag. Langston Long with that hit after an 11-yard gain. A lot more penalties in the second half than in the first half, which was far cleaner. And we've seen Virginia quite a bit, you know, penalties, especially of the nature we've there seen. There is no foul on late hit out of bounds. First down. So nothing there on Langston Long. You know, Chandler, I think, is still in bounds. You know, he barely is getting out of bounds before he's hit. I, I originally thought live, you know, that yeah. it seemed a little bit late and high. But on replay, no. I think it's the right call. At the 11. A first down for North Carolina, trying to knock it in again. As we approach the three minute mark here at Chapel Hill. This time it's Hood with the carry. He dives ahead. Long gets credit for the tackle there. 
In time winding down here second down and six and a timeout. We have had twelve hundred combined total offensive yards in this game. Well for Heels fans tonight to sing and dance look at this in the South's oldest rivalry Carolina their most points against Virginia since 1943. Were they throwing the football back in 1943 <laughs> like what apparently how, I mean how do you score that many points in 1943 before you were like designing exotic pass plays before run pass options Dave how'd they do it I, I'm not sure but the current <laughs> drive is seven plays 58 yards almost four minutes have been running that clock very well. Chandler trying to bounce outside, finding the end zone again. He's in for the touchdown. A seven-yard run. Ty Chandler in a big way tonight. It has been a huge part of their offense. And they play 65-yard drive for North Carolina. Chandler has been outstanding. You know, it never seemed to really find a home at Tennessee. And great opportunity here with two good backs leaving for the NFL. 59 to 39. He gets up to 20 carries, 198 yards, and two touchdowns. That's, a, that, that's an incredible night for a guy who, you know, probably in some ways wasn't totally sure what his role would be transferring in here and mm, look at these guys tonight I don't know who your star is you know ultimately who's your number one if you had to choose I mean for me I, I'm saying Josh Downs which is saying that but look, maybe we need to give the offensive line some love too because mm -hmm. it's not just been Ty Chandler running it it's been Sam Howell running the football and so I mean, you think about, you know, we, we've talked about how they played so many guys on that offensive line. You know what, Dave? I think we would have to give it to the big guys. I think we'd have to go that route. Yeah, I think that would very, be very, very appropriate. Anderson and company, he's had a very rough week himself, but able to participate. Showed up in a big way tonight. Now you're also correct though about Josh Downs. I mean some of the catches he made early in this game in particular to set the tone for that offense were just incredible. Yeah I mean it would it was crazy what he did but I, like you see Sam I think Sam is right there saying the guys are up in the booth talking about who should get this award for, for player of the game and we decided to give it to you. I think it's what Sam's telling them right now. You guys earned this. Armstrong with the toss and complete for a first down to Jacob Rodriguez and a 17 yard pickup. And Brennan Armstrong has just reached 500 passing yards and his team is down 59 to 39. <laughs> That's a school record by the way. And you think about some of the good quarterbacks Aaron Brooks Matt Chobb guys have played in that program. I think that he's setting that record. Short one to Walker. Walker off to the left side. Under two and a half to go. So any way you cut it, it's going to be a very impressive offensive night for Virginia as well, in particular for their talented quarterback who has thrown for four touchdown passes, over 500 yards. But it's going to be a, a bit of a bitter pill for him. Because they will not win the football game. Armstrong is going to run and fire, and that one's going to be complete. With 2.06 remaining, an eight yard gain as he got it to Fields. So that will move the sticks. You know, for Armstrong, watching him play early a year ago, I, I wasn't sure about his decision making. And tonight and really through three games now this season his decision making has been really really good and the way that he's shown as a passer has been impressive 
Going to be sacked, though, on that play by Rucker. A loss of five yards on the sack by the sophomore out of Hartwell, Georgia. And Virginia will take a timeout, second down and 15. With a minute and 34 seconds to go. You know, a lot of the fans have departed, but the crowd was a very active part of this thing early on, I thought, Tim. I think you're right, especially when you think back to the first two drives of the game for Virginia, where they kind of stalled down towards the student section for North Carolina, and it was, you know, a legal procedure. And then when that happened, it seemed like it was a signal to the students in the student section, hey, get even louder to try to have an impact on this football game. And, you know, the environment was exactly what you would want it to be for a game against, you know, two rivals on a great night. And honestly, I think we were all rewarded by what we saw. Particularly if you love high-octane passing attacks, not to mention a great rushing attack tonight for the Tar Heels. Hollins and Walker in the backfield. Armstrong wants to air it out again and hits his target. And another catch made by Henry, Rayshon Henry with the grab for first down. 27 yards. So Armstrong's numbers are just going to be incredible by the end of the night. Racking up a lot of these yards here down the stretch. He's at 544 passing yards. So he has smashed the Virginia record. And again, four TDs as well. Rolling and throws it out. With a minute eight to go. And I just am curious, you know, if, when Virginia's coaching staff looks back at this, as they've called 50 passes, you know, I, I would have never thought that that would be the formula. That being said... Armstrong, the way he played was was really a big reason they were fighting back into this football game, you know, and I view him so much more as a passer, seeing what he did in person tonight, even though he had come in with the hot hand throwing the football. The guy who backed up Bryce Perkins for a couple of years, but getting his chance, and he has flourished in this role. He wants to throw again. Complete to Hollins. Hollins upended. Rucker again with a tackle. And another timeout. On third and ten with about a minute to play. And North Carolina closing in. Taylor the player down. Closing in on snapping this four game losing streak which had really Gotten under their skin four straight games to Virginia. And I think Mac Brown was concerned about a number of guys down, particularly in his offensive line, as he comes out to check on Taylor. And some key injuries, but they were able to overcome those tonight. Kind of a next man up. And Mac on his way to another victory. You know, and I think both teams were excited about, you know, as banged up as they, you know, kind of maybe were in some spots. I think both teams also felt like they were healthier for this matchup than they have been the last two years. North Carolina's secondary had been decimated in the past. Same thing for Virginia. But this has been a pretty physical game, Dave, with you know, plenty of guys coming out of the football game, many of them returning, some of them not able to return. Well, the offensive numbers are off the charts. They're like video game numbers, especially for Max team. Armstrong throws again and complete. Got that one to Jacob Rodriguez, one of the quarterbacks who can do a lot more than just play quarterback. And if North Carolina can get a stop here, Jay Bateman and this North Carolina defense will have held Virginia to just 11 points in the second half, which, you know, that was not something I would have predicted seeing the way that the first half went. 
Another opportunity here for Armstrong, who has thrown four TDs tonight. He's been intercepted once. Looking to throw through over the middle and got it to the tight end. Woods with the grab. And they will move the sticks again. Time running down. 16 seconds to be played. Woods will hobble off. Does have a touchdown catch tonight, but Carolina has kind of shut him down for long stretches. He was such a weapon coming in and will continue to be for Virginia at 6-7. First and goal. Firing for the end zone. Overthrown and complete. Intended for Henry, and that's it. That's the game. North Carolina will win it 59 to 39. The oldest rivalry in the South. This edition goes to Mac and the Tar Heels. These two good friends, they go back a long, long way. North Carolina 59, Virginia 39. What an offensive performance. I mean, it, it was outstanding, and just the response, especially, you know, kind of shot after shot from each side and Sam Howe and this North Carolina offense coming into this season with so many expectations for them really look like they were in a groove get some of these young players you look at you know as you know Virginia you know heads off this field oh, this is a really nice moment by the way and I think there's a lot for them to be excited about going forward namely the way Brennan Armstrong played for for Mac Brown to go up to him. Yes. I think Mac knows that he just faced a quarterback. He's got a really bright future for Virginia. Let's go down to Kelsey with Coach Mac Brown. Coach Brown, first of all, just saw you talking to Brennan Armstrong. What did you want to say to him? <laughs> I said, what a night for quarterbacks. It, uh, hard night for defenses. You two are two of the best in the country. You, you're great leaders. You're great young people. Uh, you keep your head up and keep doing what you're doing. You said at halftime that you wanted to see your team come out and score on that first drive. They did on every single possession. How proud are you of their response? Really proud of them. we got some work to do on defense, but give Brendan Armstrong credit because he they didn't try to run the ball, but he threw the ball all over the lot. And we got to shore some things up. Got to get more pressure on the quarterback. But offensively, uh, we grew up tonight. We, we, uh, we're looking for an identity, Kelsey, and tonight we found one. There was a lot of talk before this game about Virginia winning the last four and everything that went into it. What does this win mean to you guys at home, especially in the Coastal? It means we're on a one-game winning streak. <laughs> I think that's it, Kelsey. It's all about the team that Saturday. It's about the team this year. It's not about what happened in the past. A bunch of these kids weren't even here. They didn't play. Give Virginia credit. I, I, I love Bronco. I love how they run their program. They got great kids. They do it within the rules. They play really hard. This has been a great football game for the last three years that we've been here. Coach Brown, congratulations. Thanks, Kelsey. He always has a way of putting it in a proper perspective. 59-39, North Carolina and Sam Howell rolling to a victory, and they snapped that losing skid against Virginia. As he said, it's a win. It's a win in the Coastal here tonight at Chapel Hill. For Tim Hasselbeck and Kelsey Riggs, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks for joining us. The Huddle is coming up with Jordan the Guys coming your way right now.